good evening. Welcome to the Scar Town of Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Um, we are now calling this to order. Before we get started, would you please join me in standing for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, may we go through the roll call, please? Michelle Stevenson? Here. Richard Silkman? Here. James Hebert? Here. Rudy Kieran? Not here. Temporary. Peter Freilinger? Here. Excellent. Thank you. And just for the record tonight, everybody here, uh, Richard, Shelley, you are uh, voting members. Um, there are four of us here tonight, so if they're in the event of a tie, if it's 2-2 during the vote, then uh, the application fails. Um, but we should have our fifth member here joining us pretty shortly by the time we uh, get, in, get into all those. Uh, so first off, we have the approval of the minutes from our August 10th meeting from 2022. Do I have any questions on the minutes that were in your packets? Has everyone had a chance to take a look through them? No, uh, I see a lot of head nodding. Peter? One quick question, and, and again, we had that kind of um, interruption from the meeting prior. Yes. These minutes, though, are just for that meeting, and it doesn't it would not include by reference the prior minutes or anything like that. Correct. Okay, correct. correct. This is just what happened last month. Just yeah, want to make sure. There's, okay. nothing, yeah, there's nothing that connects to it. So. Cool. Okay. Good question. Thank you. Uh, and then also for the note, uh, Mr. Karen is here, so we have five voting members tonight. Um, let's go ahead. I'll move for approval of minutes. Excellent. And do I have a second? Second. All right. Uh, Mr. Silkman seconds. Uh, all those in favor, I'll start with you, Shelley. Aye. Uh, Mr. Freilinger. Aye. Uh, Mr. Karen. Aye. Mr. Silkman. Aye. Excellent. I vote aye as well. Uh, the minutes are approved from last month. Uh, we have a few items tonight, and just real quick before we get started, uh, this is a public, as we get started, because we've already started, this is a public proceeding, and unless the board specifically votes to go into an executive session, the public has the right to hear everything that is being said and to view all of the exhibits that are being presented. Uh, please notify the chairperson, which is myself, if you're unable to see or hear anything, just, you know, just give us a shout out, um, and the board will work from a prepared agenda, and please note that any items if we happen to go past 10.30 this evening and we have not gotten to uh, the latter applications, those will not be taken up. If we go past 10.30, those will be taken up first next month. Not that I'm anticipating we'll go that late tonight, but we just like to let everybody know just for the record. Uh, if anybody comes up to the podium tonight, please state your name and your address. Uh, everything here is recorded uh, for documentation for the record. So our first item tonight, uh, before we get into approval of the draft written decisions for last month, there are new appeals. We have a six-month extension request uh, by Eddie and Dulcy Geron for appeal number 2720, limited reduction of yard size residential appeal at 30 Pillsbury Drive, approved on March 9th, 2022. Mr. Longstaff, do you want to? Uh, yeah, Mr. Chair, actually, I would uh, ask the chair um, to, um, um, they didn't withdraw it, but He's already been issued a building permit on 9-6, September 6. Okay. So when he asked for the extension, it was early um, or late July, early August. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so he has since received his building permit. Therefore, no, no extension is necessary. Okay. Then we will remove this from the agenda uh, per direction from the town. Thank you, Mr. Longstaff, for that. Uh, we'll go on to our approval of the draft written decisions that we heard last month at our July 13th, 2022 meeting. Uh, appeal number 2730, this is the practical difficulty of variance by Mary McKee uh, from 16 Pinewood Circle. Now, has everyone had a chance to review the findings in our packet from last month? And does anyone have any questions? I don't see any hands raised. Excellent. Do I have a motion to approve the draft written decision for appeal 2730? So moved. Mr. Silkman so moves. Is there a second? A uh, second. This is Mr. Karen second. Uh, all those in favor, Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Silkman? Yes. Uh, Mr. Frelinger? Aye. Uh, Ms. Stevenson? I was not here, but mm -hmm. I'm for it. Is that, does, That's fine. I abstain I, have you, does it, if you have, have had reviewed. a chance to review and read the findings of fact, then you are, are qualified okay. to answer. Aye. 
Great, thank you. And I vote aye as well. Uh, next appeal uh, draft <clears throat> for draft written decisions, appeal number 2732, special exception home occupation by Bel Melissa Dennis, uh, 146 Holmes Road. Has everyone had a chance to review those findings of fact? And any questions? I don't see any hands raised. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Mr. Freilinger? I will so move. Second. Aye, second. Mr. Karen seconds. All those in favor? Mr. Karen? Aye. Uh, Mr. Silkman? Yes. Uh, Mr. Freilinger? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. And I will vote aye as well. Mr. Chair? Yes. I don't believe, because we're not doing a, a hybrid or a virtual meeting, I think you can just do a show of hands now. You don't actually have to do a roll call. You know, unless you a, want to. No, that's a good point. Yeah. So, yes, we got in the habit of going through each person because we were on uh, Zoom before. No, it's a good point. We can forego that for this meeting. No, thank you, thank you. It'll, it'll save us a little bit of efficiency here. So appeal number 2733 is a practical difficulty variance by Paul Letty of Letty Build and Design. This was at 449 Black Point Road. Uh, has everyone had a chance to review those findings of fact from the last meeting? Uh, I will entertain a motion to approve the draft written decision. So moved. Mr. Freilinger so moves. Is there a second? I second. Mr. Karen seconds. All those in favor, you just may raise your hand. That vote is unanimous. Excellent, thank you. Ah, oh, it's back to normal. First off, we have our first appeal of the evening. This is appeal number 2734. There's a special exception, home occupation. Uh, is it by Jesse, is it Feld? Yeah. Feld. Uh, 28 Orchard Street, Assessor's Map U033, Lot 057. Would you like to come up to the podium, uh, tell us your name and address, and we'll, we'll start the conversation there. Jesse Fjeld, 28 Orchard Street. Excellent. Uh, Jesse, why, um, why don't you tell us the a real bird 10,000-foot um, view of what we're doing here and what are you asking for? I filed for a special exception application to do small business out of my home, speech therapy. Excellent. Um, and in the application here, it says uh, you're looking to establish a special exception home occupation for speech therapy services to children. Can you tell us a little bit more about what, what you'll be doing? Yes. Um, I will be doing the majority of my work outside of the home in preschools or um, going to other people's homes. But in the event that they don't want to do that, they're going to be welcome to come to my home and work in my office space. Um, and then... I don't expect there to be many coming to my home, but wanted to make sure that it was okay to have them. Okay, thank you very much. And we really appreciate you coming before us asking for uh, to go through this process. Um, it's not, we don't go around checking or anything like that, but we appreciate it when folks come, come forward and, uh, and go through the process. So what I'm gonna do is uh, read through each of the criteria, each question, and you can read the answers that you provide us right back into us because it needs to be uh, recorded on audio just for the record. Okay. Um, so the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. I will be providing one-on-one -on -one speech therapy services to children. This will not create any unsanitary, unhealthful conditions. Great. Uh, <clears throat> the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Only one person will be seen at a time, and most speech therapy visits will occur at others' homes or schools, so there will be no excess traffic in our neighborhood. Great, thank you. Uh, letter C, the proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood, or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Most services will be delivered in other locations than 28 Orchard Street. When services are held at 28 Orchard Street, only one person at a time will be served, so no excess of persons will be around the area. So no increase in police or fire protection will be needed as a result of speech therapy, speech therapy services being held at my home. Great, thank you. Letter D, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. Speech therapy services will not result in sedimentation, erosion, or have an adverse effect on water supplies. Great. 
Uh, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. No physical changes will be made with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use. You took away my words. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> intensity of use and... Proximity to other structures? Proximity to other structures. Uh, if located in the shoreland zone as depicted on the Town of Scarborough official shoreland zoning map, the proposed use will comply with all the requirements of the Town's Scarborough shoreland zoning ordinance. Is Not it applicable. Not applicable. Thank you. Uh, the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Yes, I do. Great. And it looks like you've attached the, uh, the title here that shows your name um, on the property. Um, just a finding effect there. Uh, letter H, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. Yes. Uh, letter I, uh, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Yes, it will be compatible with what's already occurring. Okay. I think those were all the questions that we have. I'll put it to the board. Are there any questions that board members have for the applicant? Mr. Frylinger, go ahead. Um, well, the first is, I think, just to clarify, and in, in you've implied it, <clears throat> for the R3 district, this is your primary residence and this is your home, correct? The primary and the only. Yeah, just want to make sure of that and put that on the record. Thank you. Um, the other question I had is, do you know of any other, I don't know Orchard Street very well, do you, are there other businesses or home businesses in the area? Do you know of anyone else who's doing this? I don't know of any in the area. It's, um, it's by the Dairy Corner, and then sure. you just turn by the church. It's just a neighborhood street. Gotcha. Okay. No, that's all. Thank you very much. Okay. Cool. Mr. Karen? All right. Uh, just a couple of questions, once again, just for the record. Um, have you been uh, performing this service or running this business for some time? And this speaks to the technical abilities. I moved from Texas and was a speech therapist there. I did not own my practice there, though. Sounds good. And as for the hours of operation, can you speak a little bit more of what's intended there? Is it typical 8 to 5? Um, it won't be that long because my kids are in pre-K and K, so it will be during school hours. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Any other questions? One, just to clarify, um, it, you had stated that most of the uh, work will be performed off-site, not at your house. Uh, when you do have someone over to your house, it'll only be one at a time, no more than one person or rather one client or one, one student seeing you. Yeah, one child and one or two parents, usually just one comes. Sure, one vehicle coming in. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's just sort of going along the line of questioning of traffic in and out, making sure that's not a, a potential traffic issue in the future, but clearly it will not, doesn't appear yeah, to be Yeah, if so. things ever get big and busy, then I'll go rent a space somewhere. Sure, great, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Longstaff? Uh, just, just for the record, too, uh, it wasn't clear on um, uh, criteria I, um, as far as the hours, I know she mentioned during school hours. Is it five days a week? Is it six days? Do you do weekends? Uh, no, not weekends. But at the moment, I'm also working for somebody else. Um, so it would be three days a week. Three days a week. Full the week. Three days a week during school hours. School hours are? School eight. hours, well, after drop-off, it's probably more like nine to three. Nine to three. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Welcome. Uh, any other questions for the applicant? Okay, you can go ahead and have a seat. Okay. What we're going to do is now we're just going to deliberate amongst ourselves, and if we have any other questions for you, we will let you know. Okay, thank you. Um, don't forget the criteria for home occupations as well. Yes, yes. The performance standards. I mean. Yeah, performance standards. So before we get to the performance standards, um, uh, I just want to discuss with the board, are there any questions or comments? This seems pretty straightforward, uh, very non-intrusive home occupation. Um, we're talking about no, uh, you know, no large deliveries or trucks or anything like that. It's just a single person, single car that's coming. 
into uh, into this home. Yeah, and Mr. Chairman, I, th I think we've established um, <coughs> from the performance standards approach. Again, this is the occupant's primary um, residence, so it fits within the R3 district in that sense. And, um, and I think the the other uh, uh, responses she's had, she's given us is. Um, meets those performance standards. So I'd, um, it's a good thing to remind us ourselves and to go through that, but uh, they're, 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 they're pretty clearly here. Yep, great. Um, what I would like to do is, if I can ask you to come back up one more time, Jesse, Jessica, if you wouldn't mind, um, we would like to go through the performance standards um, just sort of one by one, and then we can all vote on those as a slate at the very end. I apologize. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Mr. Chair, just one quick question. Yes, go ahead. <clears throat> this is to you and to Brian primarily. <clears throat> when we grant <clears throat> the, if we end up voting for the, the variance here, nothing that she has said in terms of hours or restrictions limits her in the future, does it? I mean, if she wants to offer services on the weekend, we're not imposing any restrictions on it. We would have to formally impose those restrictions, but otherwise she's free to use the space as she intends to use it. As she's described it, correct? Correct. Okay. If she were to to take on a different service um, or take on significantly more clients, more mm -hmm. days a week, she may be required to come back for an amendment to her special exception home occupation. The reason we ask those questions is so the board can get a good feel for is it going to have an impact on the neighborhood or not? Is it going to be within the character of a residential setting or not? And, and so I would say that generally, yeah, I mean, if she picks up a few extra uh, kids or if she does five days a week, I don't see that as being a problem. If she went seven days a week and, you know, was serving 10 clients at a time, that would be a significant change and she'd probably need to come back to the board uh, to do an amendment at that point. But she's already said if she gets that big, she's going to go to a commercial space. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, that's... Precisely what I was going to say. <laughs> great. Thank you. Okay. Does that help, Mr. Uh, yes. Great. Excellent. All right. So uh, we're going to go through each of the criteria real quick, 1 through 12. Um, not all these really directly pertain. Obviously, some are referring to lobster traps and motor vehicle parts, but we still have to answer them anyways, just for the record. Um, <laughs> so number one, the occupation or profession shall be carried on wholly within the principal building or a building accessory thereto. Yes, but also speech therapy in other people's homes or schools. Right, but I guess um, proper answer um, that 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 the um, oh, this question is more. There, like he when put it, my answers back. See, it's been a while since I. No, no, that. it's perfectly all right. When, so clients will be seen inside my home. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, we're only referring to just the operation that happened at home, not okay. offsite. Um, the home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the dwelling unit for residential purposes. Yes, business is secondary. Great, and you've pointed out that this is your primary uh, residence. Uh, number three, no more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling shall be employed in the home occupation. I'll be the only person. Single employee, perfect. Uh, letter number four, exterior signage shall be permitted in accordance with the home occupation sign provisions under section 12. Um, are you planning to have any signage here? No signage will be used, um, but if I did want to do that at some point, what You is... just apply for a sign. Okay. Yeah, and there's dimensions, uh, sign regulations, subsection E of section 12 of the ordinance gives dimensions and everything else. The easiest thing will be to do is just to call Brian. Okay. Yeah, when you want to have a sign. Um, number five, there shall be no exterior display, no exterior storage of material, and no exterior indication of the home occupation or variation from the residential character of the principal building. Um, this prohibition shall not apply to the storage of lobster traps. So you're not, due to the nature of your business, you're not going to be storing anything large outside. True, I True. won't be. Great, thank you. Uh, number six, no nuisance shall be generated, including but not necessarily limited, limited to uh, offensive noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odors, heat, or glare. No nuisance. Okay. Uh, the traffic generated by home occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the immediate neighborhood. Traffic would be limited to one vehicle at a time. Great. 
Uh, number eight, in addition to the off-street parking provided to meet the normal requirements of the dwelling, adequate off-street parking shall be provided for the vehicles of each employee and the vehicles of the maximum number of users or customers the home occupation may attract during peak operating hours. So do you have enough parking in your driveway for these folks to come in? Yes. Great. Number nine, the home occupation may utilize not more than 20% of the dwelling unit floor area provided that for the purposes of this calculation, unfinished business, unfinished basement and attic spaces are not included. Services will be provided in the area listed as dining. It's about 143 square feet. And I think I saw that the calculators, that's what, 8% of the building space. So you're, you're, you're nowhere close to you know, use, using the maximum space that you're allotted here. Uh, so that's good. Uh, letter, uh, excuse me, number 10, home occupations may include retail sales subject to the following limitations. The total area devoted to retail sales is limited to 400 square feet. Are you planning on having any material here for retail sale? No. No. Number 11. Uh, are you a fisherman, lobsterman, or a shellfish harvester? No. Great. And are you going to be performing motor vehicle repairs or towing businesses here? No. Great. Thank you. Uh, do I have any questions or concerns from the board on this? Okay. I'll just uh, entertain a motion to approve uh, the performance standards as currently stated into the record here and provided for us. So moved. Uh, Mr. Silkman moves. Se second. Mr. Freilinger seconds. All those in favor? That is unanimous. Great, the performance standards are approved. Now we are all set, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Mr. Longstaff, have we received any emails or phone calls, anything related to this? No, Mr. Chair, we have not received any written comments or uh, emails. Okay. Uh, and see no comment from the board, we're gonna go through each of the findings here. We'll do an up and down vote on each, and then we'll vote on it at the very end. So number one, uh, the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. I'll start down here, uh, Shelley. The business of speech therapy um, should not create any extra unsanitary or unhealthy conditions at this property. Um, emissions in the air uh, should not be an issue, and I see no issue with this. Cool. Mr. Frelinger? Nothing to add. Great. Uh, Mr. Silkman? <coughs> Mr. Karen? All the proposed uses would be typical to a resident, so no concern. Indeed. Yeah, the services, the services conducted here are no different from someone living in the residence and not going to generate any, uh, anything unsanitary or unhealthful here. Uh, all those in favor? That is unanimous. Uh, I vote aye as well. Number two, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in the vicinity. Uh, Ms. Stevenson, I'll start with you. Yeah, the um, client only uh, wants to have uh, one, sorry, the, our applicant only wants to have one client at a time. Um, so one, maybe two cars will be the added um, vehicular uh, traffic that is in the vicinity. Um, I see no foreseeable issues here. Great. Mr. Frelinger? Nothing to add. Mr. Silkman? Mr. Karen? As mentioned, a single client, uh, maybe a couple parents, a single family at a time, uh, typical or similar to just a common house guest. So nothing that would be above average. I agree with Mr. Karen. Uh, the traffic here generated is, would, is not going to be impactful to uh, general um, traffic in the area. All those in favor of letter B conditions being met uh, is unanimous. Letter C, the proposed use will not create public safety problems which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire or police protection. Uh, Ms. Stevenson? The proposed use um, is not going to create a public safety problem uh, more than, no more than having a guest at your house um, in terms of municipal fire rescue or police protection. Uh, I see no issues here. Great. Mr. Frelinger? Agreed. Mr. Silkman? Agreed. Mr. Karen? Agreed. And I agree as well. Uh, again, this isn't any different from um, 
the existing uses in the neighborhood where folks are having people over to their house. Seeing no more comments, all those in favor of letter C being met? That is unanimous. Oh, pardon me, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. I don't know. Um, uh, was it open to any public comments or town letters or anything like that? I did ask and we didn't receive anything. Okay, just checking. Thank you. No, thank you. I did ask, right? Did I? Yeah, you did. Okay, phew. Sometimes I forget. Uh, D, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. Uh, Ms. Stevenson? Where um, speech therapy uh, will not be using anything but uh, voices, I imagine. Um, this should not be an uh, issue for resulting in sediment, sedimentation, erosion, or have adverse effect on water supply. Mr. Frollinger? I would be shocked if this were to apply, so no issues. Mr. Silkman? <laughs> Mr. Karen? Agreed. There's nothing proposed. Uh, any changes to the exterior of the building? Excellent. Yeah, this is no different uh, in a normal use for a single family dwelling. I see no issue here. Uh, all those in favor? That is unanimous. Letter E. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Ms. Stevenson? The proposed use um, will not be impacting any of the um, neighborhood and visual aspect or intensity of use, uh, proximity to the structures, or density of development. Um, I guess you could say intensity of use by one to two more people, um, but uh, that's negligible in my opinion. Mr. Fallinger? Yeah, <clears throat> the other thing I'd say is in an era where uh, lots of people are starting to work from home or are using their homes for low impact um, uh, uses such as this. Um, this is clearly within the, sort of the scope of what is intended by the special exemption and also just what's happening physically in the town. So we're good. Thank you. Mr. Silkman? I agree. probably have more impact if she had a child. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Karen? Agreed. Once again, no other anticipated external uh, Effects to that home. Yep. Excellent. I'll also add that she stated that there are, she's only going to have one client at a time. That would be a student with potentially parents, but more likely than not, that's going to all be in one vehicle that comes there, which again doesn't uh, uh, necessitate any uh, additional substantial increase in fire or police protection, as we answered earlier. Uh, letter F, uh, Mr. Longstaff, can you confirm that this is. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor of letter E being met? That is unanimous. Thank you. Uh, and letter F, Mr. Longstaff, can you confirm this is not located in the shoreland zone? It is not located in the shoreland zone, Mr. Chair. Great. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor agreeing with the town this is not located in the shoreland zone? That is unanimous. Letter G, the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Ms. Stevenson? As included in the application, um, the applicant has provided documentation indicating that she is the owner of this uh, dwelling. Great. Mr. Frollinger? Nothing further to add. Mr. Silkman? Nothing further. Mr. Karen? Nothing further. I agree. Uh, the client has, in, has included their uh, title information that they clearly own and pay taxes on the property. All those in favor of letter G being met? All right, that passes. Um, unanimous. Letter H, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. Ms. Stevenson? As um, stated by the applicant, um, she's willing to um, take on any uh, financial um, impositions that we may uh, have uh, further. However, uh, we haven't um, applied any of those here, so um, I don't think I have anything else to add to that. <laughs> great. No, that's, that's great. Thank you. Mr. Freilinger. Other than professional liability, potentially, there, there doesn't seem to be any particular risks for this. And as she mentioned, she uh, uh, acted as a speech therapist in Texas and therefore 
seems qualified to do so here in Maine. So uh, no issues. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Silkman? Mr. Karen? And nothing further. Excellent. Uh, as Mr. Frylinger pointed out, uh, the applicant has experience um, having done this elsewhere um, and has stated that they can meet any kind of conditions imposed by the board, though I don't know what conditions we would necessarily uh, impose here. Letter I, uh, excuse me, let's vote on letter H. All those in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you. Letter I, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Ms. Stevenson. Uh, the applicant has um, stated that she's going to have no more than one client um, and maybe a couple of parents uh, between normal general business hours, less than even um, around nine to three, um, about three days a week. So. Um, Unless this is, you know, you're giving them singing lessons too. I don't see any generation of noise um, being a, a solid issue. Great. Mr. Frylinger? Agreed. Uh, no issues. Mr. Silkman? <clears throat> Nothing further. Mr. Karen? Nothing further. Great. And though uh, not, not limited to by the application, but um, the applicant has stated that their operating hours will be normal school days, typically weekdays, 9 to 3. Um, is certainly not nights or anything like that. And if it does get busy, takes on more clients, the business starts to expand, uh, the applicant stated that they would seek uh, a larger facility elsewhere. Uh, all those in agreement with uh, criteria for letter I, please raise your hand. That is unanimous. Thank you. Uh, and that's it for that. Do I have a motion on the floor to approve appeal number um, 2734? So moved. Is there a second? I second. Is there any further discussion uh, on this application? Okay. Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Uh, it is unanimous. Uh, application passes. Congrats. All right. Next up, we have appeal number 2735, a miscellaneous appeal by Jessica Stomberg at MNR Holdings, LLC, on behalf of Crossroads Holdings, LLC, at 1 Scarborough Downs, Assessor's Map R052, lot number 4. Uh, if someone here is uh, representing them, please come on up to the podium. Tell us your name, who you're from, and uh, why you're here. Good evening. Jessica Stoneberg with MNR Holdings, representing applicant Crossroads Holdings. Um, I'm here on behalf of Crossroad Holding, the applicant, uh, to submit this application for miscellaneous appeal for a gateway signage at the Downs property. Um, we're looking to um, approve a miscellaneous appeal to um, grant relief from restrictions on non-conforming signs. Okay. Okay, great. Um, uh, go ahead. So, so again, we're here for miscellaneous appeal and application to grant relief from restrictions of non-conforming signs, and this is contained in section six, excuse me, 12K of the ordinance. Um, the request is specifically to grant relief from the required 15-foot setback to the right-of-way for a business directory sign due to unusual circumstances on the property. Um, this approval is necessary due to the proximity of the sign um, for existing and expanded in the relocation of the right-of-way also due to the presence of existing wetlands that cannot be impacted, presence of tree cover, um, as well as the um, no availability of upland area for the applicant to be able to meet that 15-foot setback requirement. Uh, so as you all may have seen before, here we're looking at the Downs Master Plan. Um, this is an approved master plan. There are a number of districts, and this includes the Town Center North District, uh, which is located in the interior of the property. Uh, this is planned to be the economic and community-based hub of the entire project. Presently, there's no signage to announce the interior of the project um, at the boundaries of the property. And as this property and the goals of the town center district evolve, uh, the project and its tenants interior to the project will require advertising for visibility and, and their success. So just kind of... Zoning in here on the town center district, it's highlighted there in red. Um, this is interior to the over 500 plus acre site. 
Again, this is planned to be the heart of the economic and community development of the site. And that's in coordination with those representing the Downs and Crossroads as well as the Town of Scarborough. Uh, the plan is to include retail, commercial, and community engagement uh, in, uh, programming. It is also intended to host about four to six key anchor tenants uh, that will rely on the approval of signage on the um, access points to this property um, to announce their presence there on the interior. Um, again, um, the entirety of the town center district outside of these anchors uh, will look to have visibility on the access points for their success. So there are two commercial gateways to the property. Haigas Parkway, uh, this is uh, the right side blue blob. Um, this is the intersection with the approved Market Street, uh, which is presently under construction. At this point, we are able to meet all the requirements based on Section 12K of the ordinance, um, based on the existing location of the right of way in the wetlands there. Payne Road to the other side there, thank you. Um, this is the intersection where we are experiencing very unusual limitations and restrictions uh, due to wetlands and the moved, uh, excuse me, relocated right of way. Um, that is also under construction um, at the intersection of Scarborough Downs Road per the traffic movement permit uh, that has been approved as well. So again, zooming in a little bit more on Payne Road intersection, uh, you can see the intersection circled there and then a blue line really showing its, its access to what will be the town center district. Um, so this, you guys have probably driven by it, this intersection is undergoing improvements for widening and safety upgrades based on the previously approved traffic movement permit. Um, in this location, um, we have an environmental consultant who has throughout the site identified the existing wetlands there and we've been working with um, DEP as well as Army Corps of Engineers to work uh, with them. Uh, so in this immediate location, there's a static presence of existing wetlands that we cannot um, uh, impact. As well as the improvements that are going on at this intersection, the right of way has relocated significantly. Uh, the 15 setback, re setback requirement uh, is, um, presents an issue as well for us to meet it. Uh, and then again, just the limited opportunity for where to place the signage for this access point to commercial. So it's a really funky site, so I, I, I'm open to any questions. Um, I'm gonna kind of walk you guys through this a little bit. Um, laid on top of the aerial here, we've kind of done a bit of a turn. Scarborough Downs Road is coming in from uh, Plan South, the bottom of the drawing, and Payne Road is moving from left to right. So on the bottom right corner uh, is where the approved Costco site is, just for a little bit of reference there for you. Um, I've boldened the curb cut lines and um, the major improvements there at that intersection, and I've left off things like uh, lane widths and things just for the purpose of this discussion. Uh, so based on the undergoing, the, excuse me, the improvements that are going on right now to widening, for widening and safety, um, that's what we're looking at right now. So that's kind of our base. Um, if you flip to the next, Brian, um, and scoot down a little bit. The wetland boundary is represented there in green. Um, so that line is under there. I'm just kind of highlighting it because we're kind of drawing down to the essence here, we can go to the next one. Uh, based on those improvements, uh, the blue is highlighting the relocated right of way. And in the next one, the red is highlighting the 15 foot setback requirement for signage along both Payne and Scarborough Downs Road. And if we go to the next one, we've, I've highlighted here that limited opportunity for placement of that sign um, if you can see the red line, which is the 15 foot setback requirement, puts us into the wetlands. Um, of course, we're not able to do that uh, based on Army Corps of Engineers. Um, and due to the wetlands there, we're able, you can see we're able to meet from top down the 15 foot setback on Payne, but we're unable to meet that on Scarborough Downs Road. So that highlighted orange box is the opportunity for the placement of signage without being in the right of way or in the wetlands. Yeah. Yes. That's a question. And do you know, is the Scarborough Downs Road a, a town road or is that a private road? Um, it, it is, it's, it's a town road. Um, there, there are. Currently that's a private from where the grandstand is along there. 
So it's, it's it will eventually. It will eventually be, be yes. <clears throat> so the town will accept it as a public road. Not, no, yet, no. So is, if the town if the town didn't accept it as a public road, would you need this variance? If it were a private road, you don't need the 15 foot setback. I believe it's it's going in for a public road. Okay. So it wouldn't make any difference if it was private or public. Mm -hmm. the, 15 the, foot there's applies still to. A set, there's still a setback for signage from a right of way line. Do you think that if it was a pub, if it was private, they could kind of do whatever they wanted, or? Well, I can put a sign on my property and on my driveway, I assume, and without a problem. So. But your driveway is different. Well, that's why I was wondering. You if don't it's have private. 1,500 people a day driving through your driveway. <laughs> I believe. I, I understand that, but I, but I was wondering: just do, is it 15 foot from a public right road, or is it 15 no, foot from? No, it's 15 feet from a right of way. Any right of way line, public or private right of way line, it doesn't make any difference. It's 15 feet from a right of way line. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yep. Cool. Excellent. Um, so if we move to the next one, and I'm not sure if we may need to zoom out a little bit. Um, but, it, but again, here we're showing the opportunity for sign placement. And um, so where we're asking for this relief specifically is based on the list of considerations. Um, it, at this key access gateway point to the property, it needs to be on this corner uh, first off because uh, Costco is present on the opposite corner and we're unable, of course, to go outside of the right of way to meet that 15 foot setback. Um, and uh, Brian, if you go down to the next slide, oh, one more up. One more, two more down. Yeah. One more. Ooh. Yep, perfect. Um, excellent. Uh, so the presence of Costco, of course. Uh, and then on this side where we are, where the opportunity is, um, we're re restricted by the presence of tree cover and sight line safety lines, uh, presence of wetlands. And um, so we, again, we can meet the Payne Road 15 foot setback requirement. And we have every intention in our planning and signage design to meet the business directory signage requirements um, that are outlined in section 12. And um, so in conclusion, um, the miscellaneous appeal is to grant relief from the restrictions in section 12 K of the ordinance. Um, they are specifically to grant relief from this 15 foot setback off of Scarborough Downs Road. Uh, for the business directory that will lead into the planned town center district. And um, yeah, please let me know if there are any more questions. Um, this is uh, an example of um, what the sign may look like. So to give an example of what a business directory may do in its, in its goals of announcing uh, interior tenants. This is not a set design, of course, we would be going in for a, um, a master plan, master sign plan. Um, but uh, this really gets to the meat of announcing the development itself, as well as those key anchors that will be calling the town center district their home. Will the sign be electrified? It's undetermined. Um, we're we're not at that process at that point yet. Okay, but it could be. A lit sign. It could be a lit sign, yeah. Okay. We're, we're reviewing um, signage details and considerations and restrictions and all that. Gotcha. Um, I have a question about, and I think it's the sign regulations in section 12. Are they limited? Is there a dimensional limit to how large the sign can be? And yeah. has, are they meeting that or exceeding that here? Um, well, the sign, the, the problem is at 15 feet, at the 15 foot setback, you're allowed to have a 16 foot high sign that can be, for a directory sign, can be 150 square feet. They're, what they're proposing meets those requirements, they're just not meeting a 15 foot setback. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Silk. <clears throat> Brian, can you explain if you know why the 15 foot setback exists? Is it a a safety issue with respect to traffic? Is it, <clears throat> is it an environmental issue? Is it a scenic issue? Do we know? I just don't know the history of why that 15 foot setback would be required. Uh, there's various, <clears throat> excuse me, there's various reasons why it could have been incorporated at 15 feet, but quite frankly, it's, it's just to get it off of the right of way line because work can, can be undertaken within the right of way, ditching, drainage, utilities and if a sign 
you know, a sign base is right there. It could be in the way of trying to do that work. So giving people a little bit of space. The other thing is when you get a, you know, the massing of the sign, mm -hmm. you don't want a large sign, which I consider this to be a large sign. Um, you don't want that right next to the traveled way or, or the right of way. You, you're giving it a little bit of space to, to, to kind of get the scale back out of the way because it can, it can provide or pre present some challenges for the motoring public as far as uh, vision triangles and other things. So the larger something is, the further you set it back away from that public realm. Um, can I add to that, Brian? Sure. Um, so, you have a better answer than me. Well, no. <laughs> oh, no, you are correct, of course. Um, and, um, you know, when looking, spending a lot of time looking at uh, Payne Road versus Hygus Parkway, Hygus Parkway has a zero foot setback uh, for signs and regardless of, of their scale. Um, if we were to go with this design, we certainly intend on sticking with the requirement of the 150 square foot area size, which is, um, you know, the requirement to the business directory signage. Um, when it comes to safety, I have a lot of experience in that, and uh, I actually did a study on this intersection looking at, um, basically there's a lot of studies behind the time it takes for a person to um, psychologically internalize certain messaging and what the response is to the body and all of the steps it takes for you to decide to turn somewhere. Um, it's called the vision triangle, um, and basically there are ideal, uh, you know, 10% cone of vision is ideal. If you get outside of 20% cone of vision, the, the head is moving too significantly to then safely get your eyes on the road and make a choice. Um, so being where we've placed it um, amid the other restrictions, um, and, and again, regardless of the size at the moment, um, the location is really ideal for folks to be entering and deciding to enter into the town center district for whatever you know, community reasons or commercial reasons they have. But being that it is outside of the 10 degree cone of vision ideal triangle, the size is actually helpful here. That's kind of some design jargon. I'm happy to continue on that with that, but. Go ahead, Ms. Karen. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Chair. Um, just for my understanding, is it the intent or the, um, uh, for this application, specifically just for the location of the sign, is um, aspects of the design of the sign, the size, and um, considerations that have yet to be determined outside of tonight's discussion and purview? Or I believe we're just determining whether or not the sign can physically go there. Okay. As far as aesthetics are concerned, I don't know if we are able to really rule on those alone. Am I correct on that, Brian? Um, well, in, in my nine years here, we've had exactly one other miscellaneous appeal for a non-conforming sign. So I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of experience to to refer back to. But um, in in the miscellaneous appeal uh, provisions of the ordinance, it does say that the board should consider several factors, and um, and uh, Ms. Stoneberg referred to them a little earlier. And, and so in my draft findings, I, I listed those out and they do consider proximity of the sign to the nearest street, changes in the location of the street right away, which she's discussed, um, size of the property, shape of the property, location of buildings, structures, et cetera, uh, number and location of other signs, location of conforming signs on neighboring properties and the nature of the businesses located on the property. Those, those aren't the only things that the board can consider, but that's what they can consider to determine if it's unusual, and that's the whole key. Is this situation unusual enough to grant relief from uh, the provisions of the sign ordinance? It doesn't really give the board much sway on the design of the sign itself. Yep. That's probably more of a planning board review mm -hmm. um, as they come to the board with their sign packages. Mm -hmm. Um, we can certainly look at the sign and say that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen or it's the ugliest thing I've ever laid eyes on. But that doesn't really weigh into the decision that you have to make. So, okay. I just didn't want to yep. spend too much time sure. discussing yeah, the no, design. Good question. Yeah. Yep. Thank, Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Fallinger. Similar question, I guess. Has, did the, the planning board and the town council both have been heavily involved in the, in the Downs um, development conversation? Um, was signage or was specifically signage on the major arterials that surround the area 
Um, was that part of those discussions or, um, or, or not? Or uh, Yes, signage has been um, discussed. Uh, again, uh, not in too much detail. We will have to prepare our master sign plan <laughs> and present that uh, in all of its detail. Uh, to the board and have that passed, um, and and um, that will include the gateway signage that we uh, that would be at these two major access gateway access points. Got it. Um, that that's helpful. I'll reserve my comments for for later. Okay. Uh, and is this for this type of sign? Does it have to be on the access road going in? Obviously, the setback you're really limited on Payne Road going in the um, say westerly direction there. Uh, there's no other real location considered for the sign. I promise you, I've looked. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. This is kind of um, this was this was a, a lot of research looking for any opportunity, and it's really come down to this little yellow square. Is this going to be considered as the primary entrance of the downs? One of the two. Um, you know, the the development that's going that's underway at Haggis and. Uh, Market Street is um, is certainly the other. So <clears throat> one is not necessarily more priority or uh, significant than the other, and that they're equal. I do have a question. Go ahead. Uh, so to bring this back to safety for me, um, I know you said you did some studies about you know how much time somebody has to see if they want to go. Is there anything that you could visualize that would be a safety issue for drivers or pedestrians with the sign when they're turning and not just deciding if they want to go, like just impeding their vision in mm -hmm. any way? Um, th again, there really shouldn't be. Um, uh, based on the, the distances that those studies have shown a person to take in certain information, um, it's, it's, it's certainly appropriate. Um, there are other signs in um, I'm not originally from Scarborough, so I did a lot of uh, field work and taking pictures of things. It certainly seems that there are some large-scale signs that are um, approved on other ways, like, again, high guess is a zero-foot uh, setback. Um, but I in essence, no. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Karen. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a couple more questions. Go ahead. Uh, with sort of the, uh, I know there's a lot of work going on in this area. Are there planned pedestrian crosswalks or anything that would cross this um, this right of way or this uh, this driveway? The approved plans for the Payne Road intersection do not include pedestrian sidewalks. Okay, so that's not a consideration or correct restricting factor. Uh, looking back at the plan, I think sheet twelve, um, and, and this is just from this uh, distance, but about I'd say. Uh, uh, maybe eight feet uh, left, or plant, or sheet left, and 20 feet down uh, south on the plan. There appears to be a little uh, extra space with the wetlands, and would per, um, perhaps give a little bit more relief to that bolded blue line. Um, any consideration there? I did consider that, but again, when the study came in as to how far off the road it is for a person to make a head movement to take that information in, the further we go out from the cone of vision as a person's eyesight should be straight down the road, the more dangerous it gets in terms of safety. Um, so the, I the ideal situation would really be to be as close to the actual roadway as possible so that it's for safety of drivers on Payne Road. Okay, thank you. You got to remember that this sign is really placed for the benefit of the traffic on Payne Road, not on not on the Scarborough Downs Road. So, okay. yeah, the visibility from the Payne Road is is a, certainly an element for consideration. As you have your banner with that, does your study factor in that this is a stoplight and it is in regular use, and you would get a lot of stop traffic there or slow down traffic just due to the stoplight? These types of studies don't really take that into consideration just based on, um, you know, roads that are wider with higher speed limits. Um, so the this cone of vision is based on uh, the width of the road, the number of lanes, the number of turning lanes, and the speed limit that is uh, present on the subject road. And are there um, more to off of Rudy's point, is there uh, other calculations or evidence showing that by moving it that 15 or so feet further plan view south that would directly impact uh, your calculations as far as uh, cones of view? 
I mean, I, I don't have them written down or with me, but sure. the further you go out, you know, it just increases your, so. Um, but when it comes to, you know, uh, coming off of Payne Road, uh, which is, you know, the major public thoroughfare, um, again, we are able to meet that 15 foot, foot distance. Um, and we are right on it, but when you, you know, um, yes, in theory we could, um, but with um, tree cover that we're not allowed to touch being that it's in the wetlands, um, you know, you wouldn't, the closer it is to the right of way on pain, the safer it is um, because of that tree cover. So the, as you approach Scarborough Downs Road, the further away it is from pain into Scarborough Downs Road, the more of an effort that is for a driver to see that sign and to make a, a decision to turn. Okay. Our name's Chair. Go ahead, Karen. Which is building off some of that, and I don't mean, um, I know that you've done plenty of work and uh, research in the field. Um, right now, it appears the sign's sort of uh, parallel to that roadway, uh, restricted or sandwiched between the um, wetlands and that right of way. Um, if it was uh, shifted slightly, would it be possible to rotate that slightly to be more uh, uh, visible from Payne Road? Or is it the intent to keep it sort of? Um, that's, that's a really good question. Um, the, the size or the scale of the yellow square itself is not necessarily in direct correlation with what the scale of the sign itself would be on, on this map. But um, just being that it's a gateway sign um, and, in, you know, just doing our own research in certain, you know, um, developments and, and uh, public town centers and things, it just um, generally goes, it generally goes to show that from either end, the equal um, site of the sign should be perpendicular to that road. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I don't know why, but I mean, I think if you turn it, one side's at a loss, then the other side is, yeah. I would think that rotating it so that face is more of Holmes Road and the right side of uh, Payne Road, that way you would potentially see more traffic laying eyes on it. Because if you're coming down Payne Road from the opposite direction, you're not going to see it anyways. Um, that's, that is true. Um, we, I've looked at um, Google imagery from a number of years past and the, uh, the trees that are obstructing the view as you drive north on Payne Road seem to change. They grow, some seem to fall, some seem, you know, it's, it fluctuates. Um, and then as well, based on traffic studies that we've done about potential visitors to the town center from both north and south is relatively equal. And we would like to offer both directions. Any other questions? I, I'm, I apologize. <laughs> I think I've been waving my go, hand for about 20 here, but that's okay. Go ahead, Mr. Um, Thank you. No, there's, and, and, and it, it's a follow-on to this a little bit. I mean, the, the, and, and <clears throat> I think the citizens of the town and, and all of us drive Payne Road enough. Where this is located essentially will only be visible for people traveling from on the southbound direction of Payne Road um, because the northbound direction has quite a bit of tree cover to which to your point can't be touched um, and, uh, and 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 is semi permanent in, um, on, on the the wetland side Holmes Road also will not see this because it's basically um, uh, uh, perpendicular to, to the Holmes Road uh, that the other thing though I'm, I'm kind of curious as to what the logic is on the need for significant signage at this entrance. Um, the, the entrance here is quite some distance from the town center itself relative to the Haggis Parkway um, and Haggis Parkway um, um, intersection that you're, you guys are constructing and passes by the Innovation District sign um, uh, uh, turnoffs and the Costco turnoffs. So you're quite some distance from any of the town center um, areas. This isn't really the entrance for the town center. Um, this is the entrance, entrance, if anything, for the service entrance to the Innovation District. Um, so I'm kind of curious, what's the, the driver for the demand for this signage for town center development, other than very, very kind of limited proximity? Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and again, you're going to have the Costco on the other, other side of the road here. Costco will have signage that signage will be more prominent and, and, and distracting. Um, 
what what's so important about requiring a variance for this signage that 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 drives uh, a compelling argument for us to approve this <clears throat> so the way that we have um, planned and phased this project in coordination with the town of Scarborough is to develop a town center district that offers uh, commercial retail as well as community services. Um, and we want to see that succeed. We want to see it survive and we want to see it succeed. Um, the, the equal level of the Payne Road intersection with the highest intersection is that there is more than one major entrance to that town center district. Um, and that is a matter of traffic. Uh, that is also a matter of infrastructure. Um, and when it comes down to Costco, which um, you know has been, as we know, touch and go for a while, um, we don't want citizens to miss the opportunity to enter here and to engage in the town center district because they think only at this intersection, well, that's Costco entrance. This is not Costco's entrance. They've said that they will not put a sign there on that corner. In their plans that we've seen, in their approved plans, there is a sign up on the entrance off of Scarborough Downs Road, which is a ways in. I think it would be a great loss. We think it would be a great loss to have someone drive by and think that this is the specific entrance either to the Innovation District or to Costco, as opposed to an additional access point to the Town Center District, which will offer innumerable amenities that are at commercial, the, public, and private. At the same time, though, people coming up from Exit 42 or from the south on Payne Road are not going to see this sign. So they're, that, that's not going to affect. And, and Exit 42, obviously, is a significant mm -hmm. um, source of traffic for, 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 for this area. Um, I, again, you, you, you've created an ask for a sign that only will attract people coming down from the mall, the Sam's Club, the that area of town. Um, they're not going to see it from Holmes Road. They're not going to see it from Exit 42. Um, I, 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 I don't see the value that you're descri ascribing to this sign or this signage um, uh, come through in the proposal. Um, and, and I understand why there'd be a desire for some signage, but this is a pretty significant sign. Um, it, it, you know, it, it, the, the, understand that it's not fully scoped out, that you just have a lot of design work to do and all that, and um, it could be lighted, it might not, et cetera. I totally understand that, but again, um, I'm struggling with that. So let me leave it at that. I, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, if you'd like to finish your thought. Man. And, and I understand that because to be perfectly honest, um, as a designer, this was a really difficult location to site because of the wetlands. If I had my way, and this is not on the record, I would be out there cutting those trees down. <laughs> okay, because this is actually the perfect site for a sign coming off of Route 42, people coming from yeah. Cabela's, people going to Costco and going, oh, wow, there's four more significant tenants in the town center. You know, we may even be able on one of those tenant plaques to say community center. This is a community amenity, and it's a significant development, and we do want it to succeed. Um, and I would put that sign there, even if it is just to draw folks coming from the north. I guess one thing is um, you could argue that if they are coming from Cabela's and they're coming off of uh, exit 42, I mean, they'll see the Haggis Parkway right there in front of them. And there is going to be a sign there. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? So there is going to be signage on that, sign, that side that they're going to see. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not imposed of having a sign here. However, I would like to see the sign closer to the 15-foot setback. And I'm not trying to design or anything here, but there is a significant amount of traffic that does come down Holmes Road, and that's increasing all the time. If And with the Cabela's construction going on adjacent, there's going to be a lot of clear cutting of trees on that side. Um, I would like to see what this would look like if that sign were relocated sort of in southeasterly, uh, but south on plan, closer to the red line of, of, of just being set back from the road, rotated at an angle where folks from Holmes Road and that um, north side of Payne Road can see it. I think you would increase your number of views to that as far as traffic going in and out with the, with the stop signs there as well. And it would give us a little bit better feeling about having it not so close to the road and meeting the current uh, right of way in the setback. Yeah, I, I do understand that. Um... 
The only other thing I'll mention, and I apologize. No, 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 it's totally but fine. Of my, my last slide, I did want to mention that this is going to be a, a very large sign. This is mm -hmm. larger than the sign that's there already that has been there for a very long time. Um, chances are the sign very well could be lit, especially if there are paid tenants that are going to be on here. So it's going to be a very bright, giant sign in this area. Um, I think having it just a little bit further back, I don't think people are going to miss it. But to, to your point, go yep. ahead, please. Um, and yeah, you make a good point with that existing sign that's been there for a very long time. And to be perfectly honest, though, that was a single use of harness racing that has failed. Um, so, you know, this is, again, something, a community amenity that we want to see succeed. And I'm not sure from a design standpoint that rotating the sign would do too much because we would certainly rather have the traffic coming off of Payne Road in the, in the volume that we see than on Holmes Road. I'm also not sure folks coming off of Holmes Road wouldn't be able to see the sign. And that's just, and I'm not, you know, I'm, that's just general sure. design stuff. Sure. Um, <clears throat> And if we were to scooch it down into you know this wider space area, we would still be looking for approval on the relief from the 15 feet. As you can see, we would otherwise be in the uh, wetlands, you know. Right. But then perhaps you know perhaps it's a, con it's a condition that you know we discuss the differences in that safety vision cone or what the difference is moving it two feet south or plan south to 10 feet plan south um, because you know it's a it's some really dry stuff, but it's very interesting. Um, and that would be my concern. Yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Karen. Uh, sorry, one more question. <clears throat> I know that uh, you didn't include the widths of lanes for traffic, but based on a lot of the work that's currently being done to sort of increase some of the space and traffic, um, uh, should the businesses uh, be successful in this uh, area of redevelopment? Um, is it uh, possible that there would be a need for additional space or that entry to be widened? And if so, um, would we be back here in 10 years having the same discussion if there needed to, to be or needs to be relocated into that little or scooched down a bit to the southeast, uh, southwest? To be perfectly honest, I don't imagine so. I mean, these plans have taken a long time for their approval through the engineering department between and between the engineering department and our engineers. Um, and it's, it's, it's quite wide and uh, I, w I would be very. I would just say I would be very surprised. Um, the other limiting factor here, of course, too, is the wetlands, and and there's no going there. All right, and just not now, and not in the future. <clears throat> and just to confirm that, um, that's a single lane access to uh, the development. Uh, to um, the of the sign. I believe it's two, actually. Yeah, Maybe it's two. two. Yeah, okay. sorry, it's a little confusing when I took those lines off, right. but. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that last bit. Is two what? I was just asking about how many lanes that was um, oh. next to the sign. Thank you. Any further comments, questions from the board? Okay. Um, I guess my, again, my only concern. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Silkman. I'm hitting the wrong button. You said it was two lane entrance? Mm -hmm. It only shows one lane on the, or am I missing something on the diagram? Do I have the other plans? Do I have the, yes. We've got, three lanes going out, a left turn, a right turn, and straight. But coming in, it looks like there's only one lane. I'm just going to, if it's all right, I can leave the podium and just confirm. Sure. I'll note for uh, members of the board too, Mr. Longstaff, you can help help me here. Um, we haven't really had any issues with, I guess, you know, car accidents, vehicular accidents going into the down sign, Scarborough down sign before. But then again, they weren't going to be experiencing the levels of traffic that they're going to be seeing now. I'd say it's an exponential increase. My my thought is I I would like to see if if it could move a little bit down and rotate just a little bit just enough that it's if it, even if it's a few more feet off the road yeah. and still they have to come before us with for approval for this and I and I don't again I am not opposed to approving a sign here but uh, I would like to see it just a little bit closer. Uh, go ahead, Ms. Stevenson. So this is just occurring to me now, but have you? 
considered what is the plow um, like clearance when the plow comes down? Is that going to be an issue in the winter time with the sign being closer on ho home? I guess. Uh, uh, on Scarborough Downs. Yeah, on Scarborough, Scarborough Downs. Downs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Scarborough around. <laughs> um, <laughs> when the so I'm assuming a plow is probably going to come like around that corner. They need so many feet, and I don't know what that is. This is this has taken that into consideration. Um, you can see on the plan just right above where we've identified the area of opportunity. It shows the new mast location. Yep. So that would really be um, in, in what we've seen in our preparation of this intersection is, you know, the closest point of concern. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted yeah, no, it's to a, there in summer. I wasn't thinking about it. No, it's all about the plows. It's all about the plows. So it's going to wipe oh, out the signal light before it's going to take out the sun. Okay. <laughs> and, and just to answer the question on the, um, on the incoming lanes, um, it is that, that is correct. It is one lane coming in. Questions, comments? Um, I, I personally would like to see what the, I guess, what, what your study would be or what your information would be if it were to be relocated there and if that would be a significant, um, you know, would that be a significant detriment to the entire project? And, you know, is it, would it make putting a sign there really not worthwhile at all if it were to be relocated just a little bit further, plan view south into that note a little bit closer to the 15 foot setback? Again, just from a, granted, we haven't had any real in recent memory traffic accidents, thank goodness, from hitting the existing sign that had been there previously. But then again, the amount of traffic that's going to be coming into here is going to be significantly more mm -hmm. um, and for a variety of different drivers as well. It's not the same folks that are going to the downs to, to watch the track. Uh, it's going to be people going to Costco, people going to restaurants, bars and community centers potentially and all, and all sorts of things that are in there. Um, I, I personally would like to see it set back a little bit further if, if that line is true and we can, and that sign can physically go into there. Yep, and um, I hope I'm not cutting you off. No. Um, yep, and so in, in essence, yep, the opportunity does encompass that area to the south. And so our request for the relief from the 15 foot includes that area as well. I think the, the and, and, and Richard, I'll let you comment on this as well, but the fact that there is only one lane coming into the downs at this intersection is indicative of your own expectations of how major an input um, uh, uh, entrance this is going to be. Um, you know, one lane is not a lot. You've got three lanes outgoing. Um, as I look at that sh at, at this sheet, um, uh, clearly to support the Costco, and that makes sense. But you've got three lanes out, one lane in. Um, this is this is not the the premier entrance to the the downs or the town center. Um, and this sign clearly is located so as not to be a premier sign. Um, it's only going to attract people coming, again, southbound on, pa on Payne Road, um, not on Holmes Road. And Holmes Road will have more traffic. I think that makes, it's, it's a good point that the chairman made. Um, the the um, Holmes Road already has more traffic now that we've uh, eliminated that sort of little, little uh, side road. Off of Bridges Road, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Access. Uh, that that, that one no longer allows um, a, 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 a left turn onto Onto, onto Holmes, uh, or onto Payne Road. Sorry, um, it's just not convincing here. It's it's and, and I think I I, I share um, the, the chairman's and Mr. Karen's comments that scooching this down. I love the word scooching this down um, seems to offer you know the right balance of a sign that is clearly not for the major in, in, um, uh, 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 road here, um, and that you know I I don't like. I don't like cutting into the wetlands. I don't like variances against the wetlands here. Um, it, 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 we've already got a lot of town comment that there's concern about the wetlands being interfered with by Costco and by other developments in the area. Um, I think we have to be very careful about this kind of a variance. So I'll let that go. Um, I would just mention that, um, pardon me, I would just mention that um, the reason we're here is because we can't and don't want, don't wish to cut into the wetlands. Um, it's the wetlands exactly in, in addition to the relocated right of way that brings us here. Mr. 
Karen, did you have something? I did have a question, and it's more for the board. Um, okay. Knowing that tonight's discussion is not related to the aesthetics of the sign or um, aspects that have still to be determined, um, when that, uh, if or when that comes to the town for any additional review or comment, um, could that discussion determine the exact placement of the sign uh, or is that part of tonight's discussion? Because I know that they're before us tonight because they're needing a variance regardless of where that sign is located based on the existing conditions. But the exact location of that, uh, could that still be considered and brought back in front of us or another board uh, for the final determination? I think tonight we are just we are just determining whether or not they're allowed to put the sign here. Okay. And we can base that information on its location and proximity. So physical location can be taken into our decision and account. But aesthetically, no, okay. those cannot. My, my issue is uh, having it, I guess, that close to the intersection, that close to the road, I just fear for you know, that one time that someone's going to go off and, and take a wide turn, not paying attention on their cell phone or something like that. If it is back a few more feet, a little bit closer, I'd feel a lot better about that. I'm not opposed to a sign here. Um, I, do, I would like to see it closer to the setback. What we do here and every uh, uh, most appeals that we, that we review, we're trying to look for the something that's the, um, the least impactful that is not conforming. Uh, and I understand this is a very, that's a very um, uh, calculated spot for, for perfect view coming from the north side of Payne Road. However, from our standpoint, we want to see something that's uh, a little bit closer to uh, the actual setback lines. And there is an opportunity for that to be closer to the setback lines. And I think the, 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 um, what I'm hearing from the board, and someone please correct me if I'm wrong, is that we would like to see that. Um, I guess, is there an option at this point to table this, to ask the applicant to go back and provide us with evidence? And we would give clear direction. I would want to see, you know, is it feasible at all to put the, fic, the, the, the location of the sign in that spot that we're talking about here? Mr. Chair, if I could. Go ahead. I, or is that outside I, of our purview here? I'm trying to, I'm trying to leave my own opinions out of this. I, I think the board's gotten some you know, got some, some, some good discussion here and some good points have been made. I think there's too much focus and emphasis on where exactly the sign is going to go as opposed to are you going to allow a sign to not meet a 15-foot setback? I think the applicant has provided ample illustration of why they can't meet a 15-foot setback on the Scarborough Downs Road. I think we could all agree there is no place to meet a 15-foot setback on the Scarborough Downs Road. So could the board consider perhaps a condition upon its decision that says that the exact location will be approved by the town? That would be the town engineer. That would be the planning board during their review. If the board <clears throat> feels this is an unusual enough circumstance to allow less than a 15 foot setback to the right of way. I think, you're, I think you're getting, I mean, frankly, getting too far into the weeds. Let's deal with, is it unusual enough to allow? Because there's nowhere. I don't care if you put it cleared 20 feet down there. It's still not going to meet 15-foot setback. So your concern is valid, but at the end of the day, it's still not going to meet a 15-foot setback, and that's what they're asking for relief from. You can do one of those Reno signs. Kind of like that. Well, I'm afraid you're going to convince them to have a spinning world <laughs> turn sign. <laughs> So that, that it can be read from all directions. That, and, and I really don't want to see that. So and that I would, just that would be cool. But <laughs> I would say I would with respect with respect to the applicant and everyone's time here tonight. Um, and, and I understand what you're saying, Brian. I, again, I'm not opposed to, this, to uh, the sign. Being I just think here. you can place conditions on it without and that's redesigning the exact spot. And that's the solution yeah. that I'm looking yeah. for. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't want to have to, you know, send you back and have you come back another um, a month later. It's a waste. It's really a waste of time where we can try to resolve something here. But if there is a condition we can put on here to ask you to place the sign in that area or as close to the 15 foot setback as you physically possibly can, would that be something? that you're amenable to. Yes, and I, and I would reiterate that I, I apologize for the visual 
example of a sign shaped yellow opportunity it should be encompassing that entire area that is not wetlands and that is within this 15 foot setback gotcha um <clears throat> okay go ahead mr silver <clears throat> there are two setbacks that we're interested in obviously there's the pain road and there's the homes road and we've met the pain road setback and or the Scarborough um, Downs Scarborough. one, you mean? In the Scarborough Downs, yeah, yeah. The, the extension of it, thank you. Heard. <clears throat> and, um, as part of this concept of conditioning, we might want to suggest that if it makes sense to violate the pain road setback just a little bit in order to get more opportunity to move this sign further away from the Scarborough Downs, setback that that may be something but, to but consider as well it, there is no there is no option. and the um this illustration there is no place yeah and pain road, road is under uh dot the DOT out here. Yeah. Ah, yeah so, so it's a different to, they, they won't do it okay that's why i'd say that let's not get into the des redesigning this let's just determine is the situation unusual enough sorry is the situation unusual enough to grant relief from the 15th that's really the question Mm -hmm. That's the question. And then place a condition that the exact location has to be determined at a later date because we don't even have a final design. We don't know if it's going to block people's vision. You know, so the, the I'm, I'm thinking maybe a mock-up of the yeah. sign when you decide your final thing and then everybody goes out and looks and says, yes, this is. And that is required of us when we present our master sign plan to the to the board that will include location and we will have to place that on these approved civil drawings would but, it but that will be the planning board right that would be the plan correct board. that's and and, and I, I wonder do we have a cart before the horse issue here should we wait for the planning board to consider that or i, I, I i'm asking that i'm not i'm no, not planning board it. may planning board would probably kick it back to us to mm -hmm. whether or not we would allow them to have a sign there in the first place and then okay. planning board yeah, would just, say mm -hmm. this is where the sign can go yeah, i'm just, in, just trying around. to understand the procedure yep. no no we're in the correct order of operations here i guess at this point uh, I'll, I'll bring this around here uh, I will entertain a motion to approve the miscellaneous appeal. Uh, that doesn't end the discussion at this point, continues it, but we can move this along for, for um, processes' sake. Uh, so I will entertain a motion to appeal the miscellaneous appeal 2735. Do I have a... Uh, so Pardon moved? me, Mr. Chair. Uh, so moved. So moved, but real quick, is there a second? Is there a second? Go ahead, Mr. Karen. Any public comments or anything like that? Uh, okay. That's not really in this particular this application, okay. I don't believe. That's Am I fine. correct, Mr. Longstaff? Well, no, they, we could have received public comment, but, but we, we did not. We did okay. Not. Well, thank you for reminding me, Ms. Karen. Uh, so we are in the we're in the comment section of this. So we can before we go to a vote. Uh, now is the point where we would institute a um, um, uh, a condition, uh, and I will. I would like to amend the motion to include the condition that the sign be located as close to the 15-foot setback as physically possible. And that would kind of carry it into that closer area that we're speaking about there without going into too much more detail or unnecessary words for those. I'm trying to keep it as basic as possible. Is that suitable for members of the board? And do I have a, I'll say, uh, does someone want to say so moved to make it official? Because I can't. So moved. All right, is there a second? I'll second. All right, Mr. Karen, second. So the the uh, current um, the current motion is to approve uh, this appeal with the condition that the sign has to be located as close to the 15 foot setback as possible. Sir, can I ask one follow up question? <clears throat> Go ahead. <clears throat> when Brian was talking earlier about the reasons for a 15 foot setback, he mentioned culvert work other kinds of things that might be interfered with mm -hmm. if there were things in that in that area and i'm wondering if we could also impose a condition on the applicant that should the town once it takes possession of scarborough downs road need to do any culvert work or any work in that right away where the sign interferes with that operation that the applicant would have the obligation to accommodate the town one way or another so that the work can be done. I, I think that might be a little bit too specific on here, on here, Richard. However, um, you are free to make the motion to uh, add that um, uh, condition to this motion right now and everybody can vote on it. And that, I would like to. to make that as the motion then. Okay, is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. Uh, 
I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure I understand what the condition is. Yeah. Could you restate it? Well, his condition is uh, the the owners of the sign is responsible for um, any work that has to be going through there. So no, 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 no. <clears throat> go ahead. Correct me then. <clears throat> if once the sign is built, if the town, which at that point will own the Scarborough Downs Road and the right of way around it, if the town needs to do any work in the right of way, and because the sign is not set back 15 feet, if it interferes with the town's ability to do that work, that the applicant or the owner of the town sign at that point would have the obligation to accommodate the town yep. in the work that it had to do in the right of way. Yep. In what way would they accommodate? Yeah, can I? <coughs> they I have would a question have to move it. That. They would have to. Clarification, you're asking. Yeah, I have a question about that. Please go ahead. Um, isn't the point of the of a right of way though to designate what is private property and what is Scarborough property and the for and the 15 foot setback that exists in the ordinance it may exist on Scarborough Downs Road but it otherwise doesn't exist on Highgus for example so it doesn't doesn't isn't the 15 foot setback just related to the designation of the road as as it exists in its in its hierarchical designation where as any work that would be done would have to be done regardless in the right of way. It would have to be done regardless. I guess, Mr. Silpin, you're looking at to make sure that work can still be done in that area despite the sign being there. Is that correct? <clears throat> correct. And if it if the sign is an impediment to work being done, then it's the applicant's obligation to accommodate the town. I believe if it's on our property, can that be? <clears throat> we're, we're granting a variance. <clears throat> Ordinarily, this would be five feet beyond where the right of way would be at a minimum, right? We're allowing it to be within that five foot range. Now, Mr. Longstreet said earlier on that part of the reason for the 15 foot setback was to allow work to be done in the right of way. Now, if the sign inhibits that work from being done, then somebody has to accommodate that. Either the town has to spend money to move the sign so that it can do the work, or the town or the applicant would have to spend the money to move the sign so it can do the work. So my condition that I'm proposing is only that if we ever get to that point, and probably we'll never get to that point, but if we ever do get to that point, that one of the conditions of the variance is that the applicant would have to take the financial responsibility of accommodating the town in any work that was being done in the right of way where the sign was impeding that work. So that the, uh, the town wouldn't be responsible for taking down the sign, putting the sign back up. Correct. They would have to be the owner's financial responsibility to um, relocate or remove the sign, put it back up if there's work that's being done there that the town requires. <clears throat> and, and that the moving of the sign was necessary for the work to be done. As I said, it's probably not going to happen, but, you know, it's a condition. We're, get, we're granting the variance. The only cost that this variance could impose on anybody really is the town's ability to do work in, in the right of way, and so we might as right. well hold the town harmless to it if we're going to impose the con or we're going to allow the variance. So eventually, if the town does want to put something through there, it's on the owners of the person who owns the, the, the owner of the sign in order to take care of any expenses of moving, relocating, shifting the sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is that and, yes, it definitely makes sense. And forgive my ignorance on this, but is it stated in the, ordin in, in the ordinance and the restrictions that the 15-foot setback is for that purpose? Yes. Okay. It probably is, yes. I don't... And, and I think, Mr. Chairman, regardless of whether it's stated in the ordinance, it's we're granted a, a, the right as a board to establish conditions on any variances which don't meet the ordinance on, on the strict surface, which yep. this doesn't meet the ordinance on the strict surface. Yep. So um, regardless of the, of the purpose, um, we still have the, that, that, that right. And, and uh, I... I I think Mr. Silk and I, I I'm, I'm in concurrence with that. I think you're, you're thinking intelligently down the road. Okay. Um, any further discussion, members of the board? You're gonna, we're going to take a vote. On that amendment, are you going to 
act on that amendment? We did vote on that. Condition? Yeah, we did. Yeah, on we did. I don't think we voted no, on we it. Didn't. We oh, haven't voted we, on anything. Excuse me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We did. We <laughs> moved for it, and uh, now we need to vote okay. for it. So, all those in favor of uh, the Second Amendment being approved? That is Mr. Silkman's amendment. It was seconded. It was seconded. It was seconded. Yeah. 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 Second by, I think, Mr. Karen. I don't vote as well. That was unanimous. Uh, so currently we have the motion to approve with condition one uh, has to be located as close to the 15-foot setback as possible and the condition two the ex did we vote on that first variant uh, the first condition I don't think we voted on the first condition. I don't think we did either yeah, so sure. all those in favor of having it be located as close to the 15-foot setback as possible that first condition that is unanimous thank you Sorry. Um, no I, I appreciate it thank you very much uh, the second condition is um, the owner of the owner of the sign is financially responsible for any work related to um, work in the right of way. I guess well, exact wording Close is that. Enough. I mean, we voted on it; it's already there. So. Yeah, yeah, but the intent is there. However, yeah. we've more than. Um, and we can see the wording when we come back next month. And and if it needs to be corrected, yeah, we can fix it uh, at that point. Yeah. I'm not and, a lawyer. And we'll and we'll be able to see that, I imagine, because it's not the financial burden that in the right of way, but if it's. We'll figure, yeah. We can, we can work that yeah, out. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I mean, what's your time frame on this decision? Is the sign going to be produced tomorrow? Okay, so I would, I would be hesitant. The way our process generally works is approval happens tonight. You know whether it was up or down. There's usually a document that gets signed by the chair, an approval document, but the wording will not be voted on by that time. So I would I would withhold that until the board has a chance because I, quite frankly, I don't know how in the hell I'm gonna word this. <laughs> I, well, I mean, I can do it. I just don't know if it's gonna say the same thing that you guys thought you were saying. Okay. So I really do want it to come back to the board for approval. And well, it, would, it always would, wouldn't it? Anyway, well, it don't would, we but, but the tr what I'm trying to say is the document that they would normally receive within seven days oh, I see. of the vote Has to have won't the have that wor same wording in it <clears throat> because, I'm, I, because you need to approve that mm -hmm. wording because this is a condition we don't normally have. Understood. So <laughs> if, you, if, if a month from now is fine, you know, you know that it's approved, you just won't have the exact wording of that condition. Yes. That's not really going to hold you up. We'll work it out. Is that okay. acceptable? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> seeing no more further discussion, all those in favor of uh, the miscellaneous appeal 2735, all those in favor, please As raise. As amended by both amendments. That includes both amendments, conditions one and two. <laughs> and that is unanimous. It is approved. Thank you very much for your thank time you. and your patience. I would like to say thank you to, well, sorry, to <laughs> Brian, too, for bringing us back on track for yes, what you. the main focus of that was. So thanks. Agreed. One, I'll save a comment for the end. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's only board comments. We can chat yep. about that at the end. Our next application is uh, appeal number 2736. This is a variance appeal by Michael Richmond of Custom Concepts on behalf of the Ross family, LLC. Uh, this is 10 9th Street, Assessor's Map U023, Lot 64. Tell us your name, uh, why you're here, and uh, overview of the project, please. Absolutely. Good evening. Mike Richmond, Custom Concepts Architects. Um, and forgive my cough. I'll do the best I can. It is not COVID. I've been <laughs> tested over and over and over. Um, <clears throat> I'm here tonight on behalf of the Ross family um, of 10, number 10 Ninth Street, uh, requesting a variance to allow for the removal and reconstruction of their existing home. Uh, the owner, Mr. Ross, is here this evening. So we received approval from this zoning board uh, in April of this year for a limited setback reduction for this particular project. And I want to kind of explain why I'm back in front of you again tonight. Through that process, we worked very closely with Brian um, to develop a plan that would include the temporary relocation of the structure, or a portion of it, uh, in order to maintain its grandfathered location. 
But since that approval, um, we've worked with a local reputable builder on the means and methods of that idea of the temporary relocation and then relocating the structure back to it where, where it needs to lie and have simply found it to be um, impractical. We consulted a local structural engineer whose analysis supports our concerns of moving this particular structure in a, in a safe and logical way. We consulted with um, a local reputable building moving company um, on the cost and logistics of the move. <coughs> so with this information, we respectfully request a variance to allow us to do the following. Uh, completely remove the existing structure, replace the structure with the design that was already approved by the zoning board, um, really the exact same design with the exception of we, we did change a couple windows and doors, but nothing that affects the shell or the size or anything else. Um, and we did shift the exterior deck to the southeast side, which would now be completely conforming. That's something that Brian and I talked about. Um, we would still raise up the garage and install a new foundation below it just as originally planned. So the final product would be identical to the one that was approved with the exception that now we want to take the deck and, and put it in a conforming location. So hopefully that goes the right way. Uh, the only reason we're here asking for this variance instead of a variance of a lesser impact is because just a small portion of this lot towards the water happens to be in a velocity zone. So not the structure itself, the V-zone doesn't touch where the structure lies, just a little bit. So we're forced to apply for a regular variance instead of one of, of a lesser impact. Couple supporting points. Um, this structure was constructed prior to 1900 um, and it's simply not structurally sound or stable to comply with the current building codes. I mean, really, once we got into the weeds on how to physically move this thing, um, it's in worse condition than we thought. According to the DEP, we must maintain this structure in its current location. Um, we have a permit application in, um, we've spoken to them several times, um, and we're currently waiting for our approval. But to ensure that we would put the new foundation exactly where this other one is, we'd have it all done by a, a licensed professional surveyor. If granted, this approval would actually allow the construction process to take a lot less time, which would be much more beneficial to the neighborhood. It would add months to the length of time of the construction process if the existing structure must be temporarily moved, lifted up, moved back. It's a, it's a big process. Um, without this relief, the existing frame would be temporarily placed on the west side of the property, more towards the, towards the main road. It would have to go relatively close to the neighbor's home. You have no choice. Um, it'd be, have to be placed high up on those stacks, those block stacks. I'm sure you've seen those many times to allow the equipment to get back in to, to relocate it. It would place the structure up pretty high, which would temporarily block a lot of people's views. It would need to be fenced off for safety. Um, it would be a pretty big mess even if it's done properly. Um, the additional costs of this exercise uh, over and above normal construction would be substantial, much more than we anticipated, again, once we really got into these weeds on it. I'd written up an, F an estimate of at least 40,000. I mean, since then, since talking to the builder and multiple people, um, we think it's much, much higher than that. So to, to end my discussion here, I mean, I've, I've seen similar projects start out and then come to a stance, standstill once the project is underway and these types of things come to light. It leads to very costly delays, it leads to very unhappy neighbors, and it forces us to plead with the zoning board under pressure for something we're asking for today. So I'm hoping that our, our honesty about this upfront um, allows us all to avoid that, that situation. So to that, I'll answer any questions. Part, uh, one, one quick question I have first, and then I'll get to you, Mr. Karen. Um, in here, you provide, um, a, under your supporting points section, is the approximate cost that $60,746, <coughs> is that the approximate cost it would be, or rather, adder to lift, move, relocate the structure? 
is that sixty thousand on top of the our the existing construction budget? Correct. Okay. Correct. It would be much less expensive to believe it or not, crunch it up and be done with it. <laughs> right. Um, but it is it is an issue because it is I mean it is right on the beach and granted the non the structure isn't in the front dune there. Um, there the structure is also at the end of a dead end road so you wouldn't necessarily be impacting too many people just one it would be moving um, plan view southwest going towards Old Orchard Beach rather that direction no I think the only place on the property that would make sense to temporarily house the building would be towards East Grand okay in that open grass so, area so plan, <clears throat> plan north so okay to speak. I mean that would and that would be temporary. That would be a few months. Correct. Okay. One one point that um, I'd like you to um, note is that in in Scarborough, with all of this on here, no one's entitled to a view, and that's one point that we I try to uh, try to keep folks reminded on that no matter what happens, you're never entitled to your view. If someone next door wants to build a larger house, then that's just how it is in, in their space. So I wouldn't I wouldn't use that one as a okay. an argument point for it. Um, for me, I like to, I, I want to see the numbers as far as what what this is. But enough of my comments and questions, Mr. Karen. You had something. Uh, I got a question, Go ahead. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. I'd agree. And actually, um, I, I, I hate to say it, we actually used the prior uh, um, uh, uh, variance as an example of how a really good variance package um, came together. And we've lost a lot of that detail on this, uh, on this as a result. Um, so I, I agree with Mr. Karen. We, that, that, that package had a lot of neighboring house information, kind of demonstrated how the proposed the um, uh, 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 renovation at the time um, was in conformance with the neighborhood, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it, it would be great to have that in this package as well. Again, we're just trying to, I think, work with, with folks coming before us to make sure that these packages are, are as complete as possible so we're not trying to, to build the, the variance um, uh, justification in the meeting. Um, so I, I, I'd, I'd echo Mr. Karen's comments, and, and again, part of why this comes out is what you came with us in April was great. <laughs> so um, uh, you're, you're unfortunately you set the bar too high for yourself, um, which can happen. So, if, if I may, though, just the design has not changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so you know. No, it, it's, it hinges on this comment that this is effectively a new variance. A, a new request for a, for a variance, as opposed to an amendment of what you did before. In which case, we'd have brought all that material forward with us. Um, it, it's just as a new variance, we kind of have to ask the questions all from scratch again. Okay. So yeah, that's all. Okay. Yeah, and, sure. and every every oh, yep, just one moment, Rich. Um, the to Mr. Frylinger's point, every application is unique, and different, and we have to look at them exactly the same each each time and unfortunately I I mean I don't have a, 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 a near recollection to all the material that was a part of that previous packet here because it wasn't included in this one tonight we're just looking at just the numbers here but uh, Mr. Uh, Silkman I mean, it, it strikes me this is a bit of form over function I mean we we have an applicant before us that has acknowledged that they have a variance from a previous application. So we must have found that that variance, everything that was being done and proposed was acceptable. It seems to me that that's a, re that's a government record and a board like this can take notice of government records. That is, we can take notice of the fact that it has already achieved a variance. And so by doing that, we are in effect bringing that entire record 
into this proceeding because that's, that's part of the public record. And so I don't see why we can't do that by, by simply noticing that it's taking notice as a board that this applicant has on file with the town a variance for the project that had taken place previously. What we're now looking at is that is the base condition and we are now looking at a modification to that base condition in this application. And I think it's a little bit, as I say, it's a little bit form over function to tell them to go back and Xerox what we've already approved and send it in to us when we can acknowledge that we've already approved it. Because we have the right to do that because it's a public document. True, but I will say that as a board, we don't, we can't govern on precedent that what we had done before we would necessarily do again going forward. Um, we don't have to do that. It's already been done. It's acknowledged. Correct. We can't take it away from him. So he nope. has the he has the variance they to can do still, the project. And they can still go ahead with the the, the application that we had approved previously as well without any issue. They don't need to come before us tonight. Um, to to finish their project. They're asking for something different on this project that wasn't a part of that application. Um, if these were t if these two were sort of married together, we would have had that previous um, application provided with this as well. Uh, I guess the, the viewpoint is this is a separate application than what they're looking than what was it, a approved previously. Sorry, I have a hard time speaking. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, could I ask? Um, I'm a little confused because I'm not sure what information <clears throat> that you're looking for tonight. That uh, I mean, I'm seeing a, I'm I'm seeing a complete set of plans here. I'm seeing photographs of the of the the existing house. I'm not sure what's missing from the last application. Can you be specific? If you're going to send. If you're going to send the applicant a message, I think you need to be a little more specific about what exactly you saw the last time that you're not seeing this time, because I'm quite frankly not seeing any difference. I, I, I agree, and <clears throat> I guess I would like Mr. Karen and Mr. Frylinger to help provide some of that, that info. No, and, and, and again, I, I, I hinge this on the statement that this is not an amendment to the existing F of variance. It's, it's a new variance, so we got to look at it in that light. What was included in the last one was um, demonstration that the design as shown was in keeping with the with other houses in the area um, that you know there were the, 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 the if I remember correctly you had some pictures of other houses or along that stretch of East Grand, uh, I know this is in Andre East Grand, but that stretch of of, of, of Pine Point etc um, uh, and, and and again if we were to look at this without having the benefit of April we would have we, we we would probably have looked for a bit more of a package of information, and and I I, I hear um, uh, Richard's comments here, and, and and I don't necessarily disagree with them. I'm really just hinging on this as we have to consider it as a new appeal as opposed to uh, as opposed to an amendment. If it were an amendment, I think we read all of all that past stuff into the record, and we're we're good. But I just don't know that we've got it. No, no, that, uh, um, uh, uh, Brian. I'm confused. <laughs> Brian, we, we we don't have the. Normally, we'd have a set of questions asking whether this is in keeping with the neighborhood. And again, we saw the evidence produced in the in the in the, in the April one. It was great, but, but that was a criteria in in the limited reduction. It's not a criteria, or the four criteria that you're looking at in this application are are well, sort of different. Um. Number three, the grading of the variance will now alter the essential character of the neighborhood. So that's that's in the criteria. So, so you've got a picture of what the house is going to look like. We have no picture of the neighborhood. We have no picture of the other houses in the neighborhood. We might know it because we saw this April appeal from a very similar looking gentleman with with better hair at the time. Um, and <laughs> please take that the right way. Um, but uh, but again, if we look at this, uh, it, it, it's. And I know it's form over substance, but that's part of the act of being a quasi-judicial body. It's, it, it just is what it is. And, and, and I, I know it might seem unfair. It might seem like a delaying tactic. It really isn't. It's just trying to stay true to the mission of what the ZBA is. That's all. Pardon me, Mr. Mr. Chair. Mr. Karen, yeah, did you have sure. comments you wanted to add as well? 
Uh, certainly, thank you. Um, so as you mentioned earlier, we um, oftentimes bring up the comment that we can't build upon any precedents. So treating this uh, in a silo, uh, regardless of anything that was previously presented in front of the board, um, I think that's my concern this evening. Uh, and a suggestion or recommendation perhaps is simply to table so that additional information that may have been previously presented can be included for discussion. Um, that, yeah, that's it. So you would want to see the uh, essential the, the the material from the previous application provided as part of this packet if they're asking. I think that would make this a complete application. Yes. Do you agree with that, Mr. Freilinger? I agree. And and again, we saw a great complete package from the app from a a very similar applicant in April that went very well on for that applicant. So I don't see any reason why we couldn't the applicant wouldn't be hopeful of a similar outcome. Okay. Um, so at this point, if you want to, you can make a motion to table this application for next month, and you can ask the applicant to provide essentially the, the application information that was provided earlier this spring as part of the packet so that we can look at this information and that information together. Um, would either of you like to make that motion? M Mr. Chair, before it goes there, may yes, I? Yes, of course. From my understanding, I have the original packet. Every drawing Mr. you Chair, see. Just as a point of order, once a motion is made to table, there's no further discussion. You have to vote on the motion immediately. Correct. That's we have Robert's it. rule. So I, we, we can't hear any. I mean, there's a motion. What's the motion? I don't think we've the, voted. the motion has been made yet because he, he, he has. No, he made the motion. Now, you didn't know, but it hasn't been. No one hasn't seconded or it hasn't, hasn't moved beyond it. I thought it yet. you seconded. <laughs> no, I, no, I did you hear him second? No, I'm, then in that case, I apologize. I, I thought Those I heard are, you say second. No, no you're, you're correct. Once we're in that, we go into the comment, the discussion of that point. But I'll. I, I didn't realize it had been voted. So, yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, yeah, sorry, Richard. I didn't. Please go ahead with I your comment. That. No, I realize the Im impact of, of being tabled. So, from my understanding, and I'm not trying to be defensive, every drawing you see here was included in the original packet, except for one. So, all, all I did was change the date on these and if Brian I don't know if you had access to this one particular drawing there's one drawing that I don't think I printed out only because to me it was approved and didn't see the need obviously um, wrong so I don't know if there's access to that on the on the screen so we could get through this yep, because if it's prepared. if it's this one piece of information um, I would hate to delay this for my for my client. It's it's time for them to move on this project, and to be honest, delaying it another month for for something that was already approved. I'm Are having a hard time with that. Are we able to make a motion to introduce that into this application, or is that uh, not a not, thing that we can do? Not really. No, no, it, we can't really accept information really on in the middle of the meeting like that, unless there were copies made for everybody. So <clears throat> it's really determining the character of the neighborhood that we're, is in question right now, right? <clears throat> is that what I'm understanding? And introducing that would help your argument? And, and to be clear, that, that that's right. It's it's the character of the neighborhood question on this one that just we, we don't have the same information we had back in April. If we had that, then I would feel comfortable moving forward. I don't know how to introduce that at this point, so I'm not doing anything on that one. And and again, I, I feel for the applicant on this one. I, it, 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 I, I know it's a bit of form over function, but I think it's important that we observe the form. But nevertheless, it is that issue. Thank you very much for just clarifying that one. I don't think the other issues are impacted um, by by the evidence that's been provided. I think it's sufficient on the other ones, but I'll speak for myself on that one. So, so Karen. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Are you able to try to verbally describe this to us and convince us of number three um, on the application? I, I, I can try to do one better. This is the exact drawing that was approved. It has not changed. Yeah, but it's the, the pictures of the neighborhood and the character of the neighborhood is on this, this variance that we're looking at. It's Understood. So when, when I presented this in April, these are the drawings you folks saw. There was an aerial view, which you can see down on the bottom left. Th this is what you saw. I have the entire packet in front of me. 
not trying to be difficult, but that, that's what was there. No, I appreciate that. Thank you. Mr. And Chair, we did we're either going to table this or we're going to move forward. So if we're going to table it, let's do the motion and vote on it. And if we're going to move forward, then let's move forward and consider the application. But it's, it's silly to go around and around on yep. evidence. No, I understand. I'll, uh, is, is there a motion on the floor? I, 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 I'll be honest with you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm torn on this one. And part of it is this is only form over. And I want to be clear for the applicant on this one, too. This is form over function. Um, we, we, we did approve something in April. But we approved it. And, and again, we have been working with folks in Pine Point, in Higgins Beach, in other sort of character areas of the town to try and make sure that they put together packages that are complete and that we're not supplying information in the meeting and we're not supplying uh, um, additional information. Um, we have the aerial view here. I would be interested to hear if there's any neighbors or anything like that. I would not move to table at this moment, but I would potentially move to table at a later point in the process as we go along. I mean, if you're going to do it, don't, let's not waste time with it. Um, okay. But, Ms. um, Mr. Karen, so I will make the motion to table this, um, as previously discussed. Could I not yet. The motion, unfortunately, no. I'm sorry. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. okay. So the motion is to table this till next month. Uh, the request is that in the exact same information in the previous application is provided for us next month. Included with that, um, the findings of fact that we had from the April meeting as well, uh, and all of the minutes from that as well would like to be included. That's from the town's perspective. Is that clear for? That would be clear for me, and just for the board, it would be appreciated if those could be earmarked so that we understand what was previously approved and what, as as mentioned tonight, probably all the same, is uh, new or was uh, presented this evening. Okay. Yes. So that is the motion that's on the floor right now. Is there further discussion on it? Okay. Seeing none, all those in favor of tabling the application? One, two, and then three. Okay, and opposed? One, two. So three, two. Um, the motion is tabled until next month. Our last appeal is appeal number 2737, Practical Difficulty Variance by Mike Richmond of Custom Concepts on behalf of Thomas and Gwen M. Moore, 8 Shell Street, Assessor's Map U002, Lot 153. Uh, good evening again, Mike Richmond, Custom Concepts Architects. Um, I'm here at the moment um, on behalf of Tom and Gwen Moore of 8 Shell Street, um, down Higgins Beach, requesting a practical difficulty variance to allow expansion within the setbacks <coughs> of their property lines. Um, the Moores have owned this property for many years and are looking to add more living space as well as make the home accessible to those with disabilities. Part of that effort is the installation of an elevator. Due to the layout and location of the existing home on this odd shaped lot, we find ourselves requesting this relief from the zoning board. So this parcel is located within the Higgins Beach area and is subject to the Higgins Beach uh, character based regulations. It consists of a single family residence with an attached garage, as well as a covered side walkway and multi-level exterior deck and stair system towards the rear of the property. Um, if you notice the pictures, which I'll show you, it's a pretty big clunky piece of architecture. So we're requesting the following relief um, for vertical expansion 
Relief requested for a portion towards the rear lot line for a portion of the new half story. This would fall above the existing structure. Noted with the blue area, the large blue area. A horizontal expansion. Relief requested for a portion of the new elevator shaft. That's the, uh, the orange area. And the exterior deck. It's re relief requested basically to provide a simplified deck design. Um, please note, we're planning to remove more than what we're asking for. The portion we wish to remove is a really unattractive and quite dangerous exterior staircase that I've walked up and not enjoyed. The portion, we re the portion that we're requesting is basically just to square this area off, make it much more aesthetically pleasing, and fit much better within the intent of the Higgins Beach character reg uh, regulations. So I basically worked with the Moore family on several different designs, hoping to avoid the need for this visit. Um, the need for more space pushed us to design a vertical addition onto the existing home. But due to the placement of the home way over the rear setback line, our designs led to a new roof line shorter than the existing house below it. So in other words, the house was so big, and in order to, the only way that I could put a, a new half story on top of it, <clears throat> into a full story, I can do a half story, um, it was a much truncated version. Looked very out of place, especially to me in a zone where it's, um, you know, they really focused on character, and I appreciate that. There's certainly ways to design to accommodate this, um, but we could not find a, a, a good solution to this. Our specific requests uh, get a little complex on this process, on this project, and I want to thank Brian for trying to help me weed through all this. Um, but I, I did list our specific dimensional requests to the best that we could um, in your packet. So I, I, I realize uh, practical difficulty does not come easily for a reason, um, but I, I do think that this, this meets the criteria. Um, with that, I'll answer any questions. Okay. Questions from board member, Mr. Frelinger? Um, sure. So, so when was this house built? Wow, excellent question. Uh, I'd say it's probably built in the 30s. 30s? Yeah. Was it improved at some point it, along the way? Or to they have. They, they bought it. It was kind of condemned when they bought it. Um, and they have basically they got it and redid the whole thing as it is now. Got it. And do you know when that was done? I'm asking because, Mr. <coughs> Chairman, there's some rule about 91, right, when the uh, zoning um, ordinance was adopted. Yeah. And I'm not sure it matters for this variance, but I, th that comes up every now and again. And it I, does, but it does not matter for this. It okay, does, got that's it. not a it's consideration. It's associated with the limited reduction. Yeah, okay, got it. Which they can't qualify for because their, their ask is too much. <laughs> right. fair, fair enough. Got it. No, that's, that's fine. Thank you. Um, just was, okay, thanks. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Okay, seems pretty straightforward. Oh, pardon me, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Karen. It's a quick one. Yes. Uh, just reading the drawings, just want to confirm that the entire roof is being elevated in addition to the portion highlighted that's outside the boundary. Can, can you say that again? The entire roof is? Sure. Based on ZB5 a drawing, that the entire roof line is being elevated for that half story, not just the highlighted portion that's blue. So, almost. Okay. The The... I need a pointer here. This section here is over the garage, not affected by the project, okay. but the rest is. <clears throat> I'll note for the board. I'll note for the board real quick too that the um, in our notes from the town, the expansion does not increase the footprint of this existing non-conforming dwelling. Can you confirm that? Confirmed. Thank you. And I noticed in the drawing that it looks like there's a 21 square foot reduction in lot coverage. Where does that come out? Just on the diagram? Sorry. Yeah. It's the yellow portion. The yellow portion. Okay, got it. Yeah. Thanks. Part of that big clunky stairway. 
Okay, that's on ZB2, section of deck stairs to be removed. Correct. Got it, okay. And for the board members, that stairwell is being removed as part of this, just confirming that yeah. so everyone's clear. Any further questions, comments? Okay, we'll get into the criteria. We'll just ask the questions, read them back. Um, the need for variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. Uh, yes, it is. The unique elongated shape and orientation of the lot and the legacy side and place, size and placement of the existing house on the lot are the basis for the need for this variance. Um, owing to its location close to the corner of Shell and Houghton Streets, Shell Street functions more as a rear access alley. It's kind of turned around almost here. Um, with the houses set well back from and facing away from Shell Street. This is not seen as a common condition in this neighborhood. Great. Thank you. The granting of a variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. It will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or fair market value of abutting properties. Uh, no, it will not. In fact, I would argue that granting this various will allow us to remove the existing unattractive exterior decks and stairway and replace them with a much more attractive design as well as avoid a potentially unattractive truncated roof, that shortened version, um, if the new roof system cannot be extended out as shown. I'll note too for the board that typically when you're removing things that are not aesthetically pleasing, it increases the value of surrounding homes in that area. Uh, number three, the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. Uh, no, it is not. The practical difficulty request is created by the unique orientation of the existing house on a uniquely long but oddly truncated lot, as well as the increase in rear setback that was instituted since the house was renovated from its derelict structure in 1994. 1994. Okay. Number four. Uh, no other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except a variance. I'm not able to find a better alternative. Uh, we looked into several other design options but found this to have the least impact on the property and comply with the character-based zoning standards. Um, the elevator shaft in particular is in the most logical position to service all levels of the home. The rear decks and stair cover a smaller footprint than the existing decks and stairs. And the relief requested for the portion of the new roof will avoid a design that would not really be consistent with the intentions of the character-based code. And you would say that the vertical expansion is driven primarily by the elevator? Well, the elevator plus this new, I'm trying to be careful with the term, the new half story on the top. Understood. Thank you. Number five, the granting of a variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with surrounding properties. Yes, it will. Uh, many, if not most, of the surrounding properties are two and a half story houses and that have been modified to increase their available living space and accommodation. This requested va variance would make the existing building more commensurate with surrounding homes. Number six, the granting of a variance will not have an unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. No, it will not. In fact, this design reduces the amount of building coverage, therefore reduces the impact of the dwelling on the site. It should not have any adverse effect on the existing water flow off the property since the only foundation work and grading involved would, would be for the elevator shaft, which is not close to the property lines. And you can confirm that the property is not located in whole or in part within the shoreland area or flood hazard zone? No, it is not. Great, thank you. And number eight, the strict application of the dimensional standards of the ordinance of the property for which a variance is sought would both preclude a use of the property which is permitted in the zone and which is located would also result in significant economic injury to the applicant. Yeah, um, that's a tough one always. A, a portion of this request is a result of the need for the elevator shaft. This elevator will allow the owners and their guests to use the home fully as permitted within this zone. Without this variance, the owners cannot utilize the whole structure. Without this relief, we would be forced to pull the elevator shaft towards Shell, towards Shell Street and or more towards the center of the home, therefore resulting in significant modifications. We'd have to cut right into that house and really tear it apart um, for the elevator shaft. The rel relief requested for the exterior deck and roof would allow for a much simplified framing structure and therefore avoid further economic injury. Um, to add to that, if we were forced to go with the more truncated design um, of the roof, we'd 
be into some sort of a flat roof, roof deck EPDM system, which is very doable in my world, um, but a lot more expensive. Would you say that the, uh, and we're in the question, questions and comments section now for the applicant, if anybody has anything. Um, if you had to move the elevator shaft, would that mean potentially expanding the footprint of the building? Uh, depends which way I move it. Yeah. Obviously moving it into the structure, which would be a ridiculous project. Um, would Not feasible. Would reduce it, but totally infeasible. Yeah. But moving it out would definitely impact that. Right, and, and you would, would you say that if, if we were moving outside of that, you'd potentially lose some of that aesthetic feel, you'd be expanding a non-conforming footprint to the building, whereas here you're just going for a vertical expansion and the existing footprint is remaining whole. I, correct, yes. And that if, if you didn't truncate the roof line, you'd probably also start to fall out of the, um, the, the, the Higgins Beach um, character-based zoning uh, or, or aesthetic requirements, I, I would think. I would agree. Yeah, okay. If I understand the intent of the code is for very nice, simple lines, and this, there would be nothing simple about it. <laughs> Pardon me, Mr. Chair. Mr. Karen. Um, so you mentioned that the roof line is only sort of affected on uh, a portion of the building. The other portion is a garage to remain. Um, but this, uh, the elevator shaft is located um, in order to necessitate the roof changes. How does one access that elevator? Is it internally? Um, and I'm just looking at the exterior elevations. Correct. In okay. fact, I can. I'm pointing to it right now. Is that a step up? Thank you, Brian. Right here. Okay. And the door is right here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Any other co questions, comments? I have a comment, I guess. So if I know we're supposed to take each uh, application by itself, um, but how is this different in terms of where we just tabled the last application for not having any information about the neighborhood? Is it different because it's Higgins? And Higgins has a more clear-cut code about characteristic or characteristics of the neighborhood? It's a different different style of appeal. The last one was a variance appeal. This one's practical. Difficult. Well, they, sure, but it still has, you know, a couple questions here about um, conforming to the surrounding properties and the neighbor, and there was one on the neighborhood, right? Yeah, there is. The, so the, how is this different? I guess I'm just wondering, I, for my personal... From my perspective, I'd, I'd, I'd offer this for the chair for, for general comment. Because Higgins Beach has some pretty very well-defined design and other characteristics, we kind of look to, I look to those standards as being kind of the guideposts. Um, and, and if Brian has to navigate those before he signs off or brings things to the table on Higgins Beach, so it, it's a little bit different than other areas of town where there is generic kind of what does the neighborhood look like sort of questions. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted a little bit of clarification on that if we were... No, it was well they were said. in two different areas, so I just nobody was saying anything about that. I no, no, you, it's, <laughs> thank you for asking the question. That's a good question. Other comments? Um, just to follow up on, I think something that was forwarded along via email. Um, has this been processed by the Higgins Beach as yet? Yeah, it hasn't been has not been reviewed for compliance with the Higgins Beach performance based code. Okay. Oh, okay. And with that, um, that would have to be done before a building permit. Right. Correct. So, whether or not we approve or just if we approve it tonight, it would still have to pass those requirements in your review. Right. And, and again, what you're approving tonight are setback reductions. The stylistic points would have to be reviewed. Sometimes, mm. uh, I know with one um, designer, he likes to have me do that before he brings it to the board of appeals. It's not necessary to do that. Yeah. Uh, when you're looking at setback reductions, uh, and that's what we're looking at in this case, uh, but I have not formally done a Higgins Beach administrative review on this. Device. Right, and it's not, and, and to Brian's point, a lot of folks do it before they mm -hmm. get here, but they don't have to. Now, and Brian, so, so when we see something like this, and, and I appreciate um, uh, um, uh, Mike bringing this, 
he has findings within the character beach, or, excuse me, Higgins Beach character-based regulations. Those are his assessments then of those. Yeah, he's 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 followed to the best of his ability the yeah. the code. Um, and again, it's it, it, the process is for a designer is first trying to understand what all that stuff is, yeah. uh, and then and then designing something that he believes meets it. And then I review it, and I may I may disagree on certain points, or I may bring up some things I'm not clear on. And oftentimes it becomes more of a he he defends his design and, and the rationale for it and why he thinks it meets the code. And sometimes I change my mind and I say, yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. And I there's a little bit of terp interpretation to those standards. So yeah, I mean they, it, they, that's why it's not. I don't deem it nowhere in our ordinance does it say you must first pass Higgins Beach yeah. Code before you come to the Board of Appeals. So I don't require that. But but then again, if we got into a situation where something was not uh, something that he was designing in d would require some change in that setback reduction that he's asking for, we'd probably have to come back to the board for that. Yeah. But okay. I don't normally, I mean, Mike, Mike brought this to me in several different stages. I don't really foresee that being the case. Yeah. I'm not ruling it out entirely. I never do because I need a final plan to review. Sure. So uh, to the best of his ability, he's he's designed something. And it's especially tricky when you're dealing with an existing structure and trying to make it, with your renovation project, meet the Higgins Beach form-based code standards. So it's a yeah, no, it's, and, tricky and again, deal. Partially, it gets to the earlier question. The, 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 I, I take comfort from a neighborhood character or some of the neighborhood questions that come out for the, the variance request here in that this is in Higgins Beach. Higgins Beach has some pretty prescriptive requirements and certainly, you know, uh, um, you know, by the time it gets to our table, um, there's not, there's probably, not probably, if there was something egregious enough to violate the standard, you would have let us know, Brian, or we would have found it our, our, ourselves. And that's kind of where I come out on that, on that thing. And, and the neighborhood has determined those standards for themselves uh, in, in, in a very real way. Um, so um, yeah, that's where I, I just want to be clear, that's where I'm coming, making a comparison between this and, and other potential variances that we may have looked at. Fair enough. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions, comments? OK. Have we had any um, public comment emails? I don't really? See, uh, I don't see any folks here wanting to come up. Being said, we'll close the public hearing here. Um, thank you very much, Mike. We're all set with you for right now. Uh, we're, let's go through each of the criteria as a board. We'll discuss and we will vote. So the need for variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. I'll start with you, Mr. Karen. As presented with the sketches, it is a unique property with um, setbacks that are restricting to the existing building and what the intended use is. So um, based on my understanding of tonight's application, regardless of their design, some form of a variance would be required. Mr. Stilkman? I agree. Mr. Fallinger? I agree. Uh, Ms. Uh, Stevenson? I have nothing further to add. Yeah, uh, the lot is really too narrow um, in order for them to have any kind of for buildable envelope, it would force them into a really odd circumstance that just really wouldn't be practical nor meet any sort of aesthetic in that neighborhood. Uh, all those in favor of criteria one being met, raise your hands. That is unanimous. Number two, the granting of a variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or fair market value of abutting properties. Uh, I'll start with you, Ms. Stevenson. So, um the granting of this variance um, should not have an undesirable change in character of the neighborhood, and if nothing else, um, bring it more to the um, design code that Higgins Beach has set upon itself, um, and possibly increasing the fair market value for the abutting properties. Okay, uh, Mr. Frolinger. I agree, and given Higgins Beach as a community is active in letting its voice be known if this would not be the case, clearly if there's no public comment on this one, I think we can take that as, as read that, uh, that um, this is in line with the, what the community's expectations are. Mr. Sultman? <clears throat> I agree, in fact, it's based on the earlier discussion, this criteria is impossible not to be met. 
in Higgins Beach. I mean, I, we might as well just eliminate it. If it's in Higgins Beach, it it's obviously has to improve it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a, approved by the planning board. Indeed. Mr. Karen? Nothing further to add. Uh, I also have uh, nothing further to have. It's this is not an non, this is not an undesirable change in this area uh, based on what they're proposing compared to what is currently there. Uh, all those in favor of criteria number two being met, raise your hand. That is unanimous. Thank you. Number three, the practical difficulty is not the result is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. Um, Ms. Stevenson. The applicant has demonstrated that um, the uh, need for the variant is due to the lot um, being elongated and where they want to um, put the new structure and not that of something that the owner has done. Mr. Frelinger? Mr. Silkman? I concur. Mr. Karen? Uh, nothing further to add. Yeah, it's uh, stated in the... Uh, Opening paragraph of the application, the um, building was constructed in 1930 or the 1930s, so certainly not the, uh, the current owner. Um, all those in favor of criteria number three being met, please raise your hand. That is unanimous. Number four, no other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except for a variance. Ms. Stevenson. So the applicant has demonstrated that there, while there were alternatives, um, this is the most feasible that, um, and less costly of all the options that they had explored. Um, there's uh, also the most aesthetically pleasing. Ooh, can't talk to me. All right, Mr. Frelinger. Agreed, and I think the critical on this one is even had alternative designs been proposed or a variance probably would have come before us, given the nature of the lot and the nature of the, of the, of the property. Indeed. Mr. Silkman? I agree. Mr. Karen? Um, on the second page of their, uh, one of their documents they provided to us this evening, um, I don't know the proper term, there's no uh, cover to it, but um, the, the appellant or the application does provide a possibility for an alternative. Um, so I appreciate that there's evidence of checking for other conditions or alternatives. Um, but as noted tonight, uh, in order to meet some of those other constraints, um, like the Higgins Beach requirements, um, design was also a factor. Uh, so Brian, uh, I think, yeah, right there. Thank you. All right. I'll just add that um, a lot of the ver vertical expansion, this is driven by the elevator as well. Um, and there really is indicated by the applicant relocating the elevator shaft elsewhere on the property just was not feasible and would certainly be in violation of other uh, portions of the criteria on here. All those in favor of uh, number four being met, please raise your hand. That is unanimous. I voted for it as well. Number five, the granting of a variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with surrounding properties. Mr. Karen. Um, I'm going to defer, or, yeah, no comment. You have to have some comment. Uh, Mr. Silkman, I'll come back to you. Mr. Silkman. <clears throat> I think the applicant demonstrated that they looked at a number of alternatives. This is the alternative that would provide <clears throat> the most feasible, in fact, probably the only feasible um, option for meeting the use requirements of the owner. <clears throat> it will conform with the character of the neighborhood and the other properties around it. And um, again, based on the Higgins Beach Code, that's a requirement that must be met ultimately anyway. Mr. Prowlinger? Agreed. And uh, while I, I know Brian will make his final determination based on the final plan, I find it, found it helpful to do a, um, that the um, uh, applicant did a review of the character-based regulations. Um, and uh, they're in line with those, and that's the purpose of the character-based regulations for Higgins Beach. So no issues there. Great. Um, I'll just also add that um, the dwelling is coming into more conformance with the character of Higgins Beach. And the question here is asking the granting of 
the variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance. You know, they're not asking for everything here. They're asking for some progress towards conformance here. Uh, so that being said, uh, all in favor of the criteria number five being met, please raise your hand. That is unanimous. Number six, the granting of a variance will not have an unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. Uh, go ahead, Ms. Stevenson. Um, so granting of this variance, um, will the applicant has demonstrated that um, there will be no adverse effects on the natural environment. Um, it actually is in a reduction in building coverage and um, uh, shouldn't have any problems with water flow um, or grading. And um, yeah, that's it. Great. Uh, Mr. Frelinger? Uh, that. Mr. Uh, Silkman? I concur. Mr. Karen? As indicated, that there's a reduction in the overall footprint of the building. So, uh, with the existing or portions of the existing roof line to remain, I don't see any concerns with um, effects on the adjacent or natural environment. Agree. And I will add that, um, and I mentioned earlier, this does not increase the footprint of the exterior non conforming building. And I find that very important here. Um, so, they're really not that that has a, a, d a direct impact on the natural environment, but it does in a way that you're not, you're not expanding um, your, your, your surface area from pervious surface on the lot. All those in favor of criteria number six being met, please raise your hand. That is unanimous. Uh, the property is not located in whole or in part within a shoreland area or flood hazard zone. Mr. Longstaff, can you confirm that for us? I can. That is confirmed by the town. All those in favor, please raise your hand. That is unanimous. Uh, number eight, the strict application of the dimensional standards of the ordinance, the property for which a variance is sought would both preclude a use of the property which is permitted in the zone in which it is located and also, <clears throat> and also would result in significant economic injury to the applicant. I'll start down here with Mr. Karen. No comment. Okay. Uh, Mr. Silkman. <clears throat> well, I think here what we're looking at is <clears throat> largely the elevator and the location of the elevator. And <clears throat> the applicants demonstrated that the current or the where the applicants proposing to put the location of that elevator is really the only feasible place. Any other place is going to create significant economic cost and therefore economic injury to the applicant. Uh, Mr. Frelinger? <clears throat> I agree with Mr. So, and I think we have to sort of in this instance where a home has been designed for universal access for, um, for uh, basically ramp and, and, and uh, um, elevator access to all floors, um, that's a permitted use of a home in this district. Um, and we uh, should probably be very careful about saying that um, uh, you will deny a variance simply because you're trying to make your home accessible. So um, I, I, I think the work has been done by the developer and by the um, on behalf of the, the homeowner here, and um, I, I agree. Uh, Ms. Stevenson, I have no further comment. I agree with everybody's comments so far. I'll just add here that you know this question is looking at the strict application of the dimensional standards of the ordinance. So what would they be allowed to build here if they were to follow the actual strict dimensions? And that really wouldn't be. Uh, an aesthetically pleasing house that wouldn't really meet any of the Higgins Beach character codes, uh, nor would it really uh, really blend well with the neighborhood. Um, so there is that as well. It doesn't have that sort of symmetrical box uh, requirement that the Higgins Beach character code is, at, is looking for here. Uh, that being said, all those in favor of criteria number eight being met, please raise your hand. And that is unanimous. Oh, excuse me, that is not unanimous. Uh, that is uh, one, two, three, four. Those opposed? There's one opposed, thank you. Four, one. Uh, I will now entertain a motion to approve appeal number 2737. Uh, so moved. That is moved by Ms. Stevenson. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Mr. Silkman seconds. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? And the uh, appeal passes. 4 1. Thank you very much. At this point, I'll open the floor for board comments. I know we were looking at a few things last month. 
Uh, I've done a little bit of research into um, looking at uh, uh, items for how we as board members should be potentially compensated or reimbursed by the town. Uh, I did attend the um, um, the uh, Board of Appeals and Planning Board workshop that was held a week or so ago. That was really uh, fun. I saw, I did see Christine there uh, and a number of other folks from other municipalities as well. A lot of them, a lot of people there, uh, there for their first time, which was really cool to see, uh, and a lot of newer, uh, different faces uh, there as well. Um, so I would encourage everyone to uh, attend these. Uh, I, I like to go to them about once a year. Kind of keeps everything sharp, and, and it defines a lot of uh, the nuanced approaches that we have and we do here on the zoning board. So I would hi highly recommend that if anybody has a chance. I know the next one's in Bar Harbor, so that might be a little bit of a stretch. But a lot of the times, the MMA uh, Planning Board of Appeals workshops are down here in Southern Maine. So please, please, please take advantage of those if you are, you know, if you are able. Uh, I know time is scheduling and personal lives are always obviously a challenge, myself included, but um, if you're able to do that, please do. Uh, any other zoning board comments? I'll have a quick update. I, I mentioned last um, time that uh, I was, um, I, as a Long Range Planning Committee member, um, we were going to talk to the Long Range Planning Committee about the fact that a good portion of our um, uh, time is spent on uh, variances on the small lots in Higgins Beach and Prout's Neck and, and et cetera. Um, interestingly, there was a member of the public from Higgins Beach uh, at the meeting, and she indicated that um, the, the, the Higgins Beach Association also is looking for a more streamlined or a more effective zoning, pro zoning variance process. Um, because, again, their expectation was that the character-based code would enable them to not have to go to the zoning board as often as they, they seem to have to. And, um, and I think there was general agreement that, um, you know, the purpose of the zoning board is not to continually look at the same types of lots in the same types of places over and over again. So that's been added to the list of things to consider, um, especially for those areas of Prouse Neck, Higgins Beach, and Pine Point that are R2. Um, where, which is really where the biggest problems come from. So we've added that to the to the table of things to talk about, and we'll be we'll be looking at that with the uh, um, and presenting something for the ordinance committee to consider. Cool. So, awesome. Thanks for looking into that. Yeah, and um, and on that 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 one too, I, I think um, we've also asked. I think um, the new planning director was going to ask Brian to put together sort of a, a list of all the variances we've seen in the past few years, because I think what we'll find is that. Literally, the if not the majority, the vast the the, the, the vast plurality of them are for these 0.1, 0.2 acre lots in in these places. So sure. that'll help guide. And and also the variances in general will help guide really where the priorities are for for zoning considerations for the long range equity. So I'll keep folks informed as how the LRPC moves awesome. on that. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate that, Peter. Any other comments? Right, good. I do, I guess, have a discussion about the appeal that we um, tabled. Are we able to change that number three? Um, like, are we able to make any suggestion about changing those variances? Like, so I wish I hadn't put everything away, but uh, they, you know, the we tabled it because there wasn't enough evidence, I don't think there was enough evidence to say, yes, they meet the number three for mm -hmm. criteria for a characteristic. But mm -hmm. in that particular, like, they just wanted to, that, I feel like it didn't have anything to do with what they were actually requesting, which is unfortunate. Um, but it's also my opinion, and that doesn't really matter, too, at the same time. So I just didn't know if what the process is in, the, in terms of that. I know everyone wants to go home, I just. No, no, it's okay. I mean, I, I think your opinion is very valuable here and very important. And I mean, I, I don't want anyone to ever uh, shy away from asking any kind of question here. Um, so I, I, I appreciate you asking. Um, I guess, Brian, if you wanna. Um, so as far as the, the criteria for the, for the variance, you can't change those because they're written in statute they come from state statute. We cannot modify those those criteria. Having said that, that was a hardship variance. The practical difficulty variance, they're actually, we have one criteria in there I don't think that quite matches up with state statute, which we should, probably should look at. Maybe that's a, 
another thing that we should should be taking. And we kind of started down that road a few years ago, but as as is always the case, stuff gets piled on us and it sort of falls away. As to the Higgins Beach code and variances, there's not really a whole lot. We we made huge giant strides when we adopted that form-based code in, in as far as the number of variances that were coming yeah. to the board. Because there are so many <clears throat> uh, so many established, already existing dwellings on non-conforming lots, it can't possibly handle 100% of everything there. So you're never going to see a situation where there's no longer a variance coming, not unless we do away with variances. <laughs> no, no, I, I, and, and, and Brian, I think the conversation that we had is not so much that we're never going to get, we're getting to a point where there are no variances required for that. It's just that um, most of the areas um, down there, not so much, Higgins Beach has its own area, uh, zoning. Yeah, I was going to say, Higgins Beach is really okay. I think the yeah. area you're concentrating on is Prout's Neck. It's Prout's Neck and, 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 Pine, and Pine Point, really. And that, that I totally agree. And, and those it's areas are, more. there are R2 zoned, and R2 is designed to have a minimum I think 30,000 square foot lot size, um, and designed really to restrict the number of houses in the area. And that's not what Prout's Neck was built to do or Pine Point was built to do. And that's really where we're seeing a lot of the yeah, problems. Yeah, and, and I would agree. I think, I think if we had the appetite for it, probably the Old Orchard Beach side of Pine Point needs, needs some attention as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's a yeah. lot of really non-conforming small postage <clears throat> stamp size lots down there, yeah, more it, so than down in, in your neck. Yeah, no, our ours is, I think, is more natural. But it strikes me that the only issue that arises in those, <clears throat> in those cases is the uniqueness of the property. If we struck the uniqueness of the property in Pine Point, Old Orchard, you know, the Old Orchard section, yeah. Higgins and Prout's Neck, we'd be fine. But that's the, I mean, that's the stumbling block because they're not unique because every property has exactly the same characteristics. Exactly, yeah. And what we're forced to do then is try to figure out what makes it unique and, right. you know, we're fitting, trying to fit the proverbial. Exactly. We, we almost need a, 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 a beach residential one care, um, zoning area that takes into account the fact that all these things were platted for tiny lots with without setbacks, et cetera, et cetera. And that's kind of the, I think, the thought process that we're getting to here, where those beach areas um, just don't meet what we set up as a town for an R2 zoning district in 1994, or 1991, sorry. So yeah, that, that's, that's really what we're getting to on that. But I mean, we, haven't, we haven't run into any issue on the appropriateness, yeah. <laughs> on yeah. erosion issues, on environmental considerations, on aesthetics. It's, all it's only that one language which says the property is unique. Correct. And then we've got to figure out why it's unique, and we come up with no, because exactly every every property is <laughs> tiny, has doesn't have setbacks. So is it unique? Yeah. No, <laughs> it's unique because it's here, not there. But that's, that's about it. Yeah, yeah. That's right. So so good conversation. Any other comments? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All those in favor? And meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.